Let's do jazz hands. Come on, jazz hands. Jazz hands. Wait, let me see it. Do the jazz hands. There's baby face doing suppressor jazz hands. Walter was doing jazz hands. We are live. I hope you got your big girl panties on. I'm Hank Strange. We are live uh, from the Big Daddy Gun Studios, which has moved. That's why everything looks all crazy around me. I'll show you guys that in a minute, but we've moved. And this is the Who Moves My Freedom podcast. Speaking of moving, this is episode 119. It's free for all Monday, yo. Free for Woo! all, baby. So what's up, people? How was your weekend? How's everyone doing out there? It was good. Uh, I, brought yeah. a, I brought a present for myself this weekend. Oh, uh -oh. really? What did you oh. buy? And you didn't put up a lower third, by the way, baby. Face. Oh, I got to do that. Hold on. While you're busy I got, over there, I got first there, dibs, Hank. I got first yeah. dibs. Okay. <laughs> first, oh, damn it, Walter. <laughs> <laughs> you call in dibs already. I saw Babyface on Saturday. Walter, we know you were out at that shooting event on Saturday, right? Busting some caps, yes, sir. Yeah, busting some caps. How's that go? How, how that did that whole right. thing go? You know, um, I actually um, actually rented out some guns to people. I wanted to shoot my guns. Wow, oh, nice. Yeah, cool. yeah. It, it paid for some ammo I bought, to be honest Oh, sweet. So, That's way okay. to do it. Yeah. Make some money. Money, Jack. Make some money. Yeah. Mostly That's the always good. Those classics you know like the pps 41 and the mp40 oh, yeah. and the stand gun and stuff like that yeah mm -hmm. i had two out of batteries on the on the ppsh 41 really one oh. right, hold on. let me lock it let me lock it here hold on it's oh. just a, like a burn splash hot powder maybe some small pieces of brass right there mm -hmm. and then on my arm the second one it's just like i got like peppered with oh like oh that looks there. so wow. Yeah, good thing it wasn't anybody else shooting. <laughs> this happened. happened at the show or before the show? One of them at the shop testing them out before the shoot, and then right. one at one at the show. So wow, okay. But this ammo was like from 1950, I think. Oh, so I don't know. Okay. I got to look that's, at it pretty. Close. That's new for you. That's new. You've moved from the 40s to the 50s. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm not. I'm not I mean, like, back in the 50s, you were like just. Uh, I think you were what, like 22. Back then, <laughs> I'm gonna be I'm gonna be feistier in this news. If you if you haven't noticed, I'm actually standing, dude. I'm actually well, that's standing. Because, that's because they kicked you out of your other place. That's why yeah, yeah. Saying. We had to move out of the other place. We're just right next door in the same building, but we're in a new thing. I think I'm gonna continue uh, going on to do the show standing. I might get a little stool in here, but I think it's good to be standing just to like you know some activity. Maybe I'll get like a little treadmill under here, and get all sexy and skinny on you guys. What do you think about sexy that? Sexy and skinny. Yeah, yeah. As a as opposed to you know, um, sexy and fat. Tactical fat. Yeah, tactical fat. There you go. Tactical. So, yeah. So, babyface, you were telling us that you bought oh, yeah. something. What was that? What did you? See what I got. So this is new. I got to stand up for this. Never, never oh, owned something like this before. But I've wanted one for years. Oh boy. Myself a recurve what? The? Oh, oh nice! Bow. Yeah, not a recurve, a compound bow. Oh, yeah, that's okay. cool. It's made by uh, what is it? Bear, I think, is the company. Uh, yeah. Wow. What, nice. Black Bear, I think. Oh. Don't know Black anything bear. about it. I think. I think it's about. Okay. A I'm glad to see you didn't discriminate against the bears. <laughs> it's probably about a 45 pounds raw. Um, uh -huh. I have no idea. I've never. I've shot archery as like a kid, but right. that was using other people's equipment. Um. I've never owned my own uh, bow set. I've wanted one for a long, long time. Okay. So I don't even know. Like Marley and I went to Bass Pro Shop the other day to find some arrows, and I don't even know where to begin to buy arrows for it. <laughs> based on like the weight of the draw and the length of the, there's like a whole bunch of things. Joe Carpenter says, "What kind of gun is that?" <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's like, "I don't yeah. understand how that gun works." I don't. <laughs> That's <laughs> old school. Real old school. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool though. That's cool, man. I'm, you know, that's also it's, good it's, exercise from what I hear. My my brother yeah. and my niece are deep into that kind of stuff. And it's one thing day. I can do out in the backyard. Like I can just set mm -hmm. the target up in the backyard and shoot, and nobody will be bothered. Yeah, by that. And, and it's and, great. Um, it's a great survival thing, I think. Scott, yeah, Kimball, super super stealthy. Super, Scott yeah. Kimball, let me know what arrows I need to buy first. I they were like, they were like, they were set up by like 500, 400, and three fifty. And they were based on pull weight. Anyways, if you got info, yeah. let me know. Yeah, you're just like a total virgin <laughs> with this, obviously. Totally. I have no idea. I didn't realize arrows were so complex. Like, you know, I actually know. have a video. I've shot a bow and arrow once, and I and it's on video. 
<laughs> it's on video somewhere. If you look, if you search bow and arrow, I forgot what where it was that we did that, but there's a video. That's not going to help you though. We should take a so. day trip to uh, the Easton Archery Complex in Newberry one day. Oh, okay, that's not it far is from really me. Really cool. It's uh, ten dollars for two people. All you can shoot for like four hours. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, it's five bucks a person, but it, but you have to go groups of two. Well, it's ten bucks for two. Um, and they okay. supply you with a bow, they supply you with arrows, they put you in front of a target, they give you the basics, and then they just let you go to town as long as you want. Oh, that oh. sounds cool. Yeah, that's it's like really a good... cool. And it's indoors. It's it's really neat. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, cool. I will check that out with you, actually. That's a good survival thing, you know? Yeah, um, it's, it's, I, I got it because uh, every time I've shot air, uh, bows and arrows, I've always had fun. Yeah. Um, and this, this one was like 50 bucks at like yeah. a garage sale. So, yeah. So, like, speaking whatever. of survival, we're going to like, first of all, we're waiting for Kevin to come in. He's going to be in a little late. You know, Kevin is all like, you know, prima donna now. He's got to come <laughs> in late on us. And he's going to be, he's going to be like, like three quarters in the side and all kinds of craziness. <laughs> so, we're waiting for Kevin to come in. Um, no, but, you know. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, he's a big star now. You know, he's going to want us to pay him all of a sudden. Um, <laughs> but, you know, speaking of survival, we do have some survival stuff going on at Big Daddy Guns. If any of you guys are interested, let me know, and I'll let you guys know about that. But there is some uh, survival stuff going on here that I could probably give you guys the hookup if anyone's interested in that kind of thing. There is some so, neat stuff that they have coming up, isn't there? Yeah, there's a, absolutely a whole bunch of different things. And that's one of the reasons why we switched studios and all that. We're going to get all, you know, we're, we're going to get, I, I hesitate to say professional. I saw you had a cameraman. <laughs> yes. Right. What yeah. is up with that? Where did you see that on the behind the scenes or something? Yeah, well, I just looked, I saw a picture of a fellow with a camera. I'm like, what's up with that? Yeah, I actually have a producer slash editor. We call it Predators now. That's what we call that. Um, <laughs> I actually coined that. I actually coined that word. It's a real word. It's a real thing. Okay. If you look it up, you'll see, you know, they, coined they don't by only hunt Arnold Schwarzenegger. No. There's, <laughs> it, we have a producer slash editor, though, so he does. He's not really going to do all the camera work, but he does camera work, he does editing, and, and it's going to help us make some of the videos a little, you know, nicer, more polished, and stuff like that. Of course, we're going to keep doing the uh, the podcast here and all the other things that we're doing, and he's just going to help us to be able to accomplish all of that with everything that's going on. Um, I know, I think I told you guys, but if you haven't heard it before, I actually now am an executive employed by Big Daddy Enterprises. Oh. Almost, almost to the VP level there. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So, and then you got to get a C title. <laughs> I don't even know like what my title is, but I actually am an executive employed yeah, by the company. You're, cor you're corporate <laughs> title. I know, you're going corporate over here. Yeah, I, yeah. We're not super corporate over here, so I don't actually have a title. I don't have business cards or anything like that. The big daddy have I can a make up whatever I want. Did Big Daddy have a Christmas party like blowout kind of thing or what? Or just no, we had a little. We had a little Christmas party. Okay. So it was right. nice. Um, they had Four Rivers cater it and all oh. that kind of stuff. And oh, Four Rivers is good. Yeah, Lola <laughs> was here. You know, and everyone was here. It was cool. It was fun. I mean, I'm yeah. going to be able to share all those things with you guys. So you know, trying to stay in in touch with everything that's going on. Let me go over to the folks. You know, we appreciate everyone that's here hanging out with us. I see we've got like eighty something people already wow, here. Making, so wow. what's up to everyone? Make What's sure you like guys. Button? Yes, yeah, that's right. Yes, the like click button. the like button, the thumbs ups. If you hate us, you could thumbs down it. But you know, listen, we hope that you love us and you do the thumbs ups. We need that. That's what helps get the show all hyped up and everything, and uh, gets you know. That's what YouTube uses to tell Wait people, hey, you guys should check this show out. Wait a minute, Tyvin. Right right Tyvin, I'm not wearing no tie. Sorry. Huh. Oh, I don't have to wear a tie. Well, I do look good when I get cleaned up. By the way. <laughs> Yes, actually, Walter is a very handsome man. I've seen him. You know, I haven't seen him in a suit and tie yet, but he get, he likes to put on. These I clean up well. I clean up yeah. well. He likes to put on these gangster shirts. <laughs> like, he's like a mafioso about to, you know, <laughs> about to do a hit. <laughs> but, um, I don't have to. I don't have to wear ties or anything like that. So this looks too short. You know, um, and basically, if anyone out there wants to know what I'm in charge of is basically what I do. I'm doing social media and all that kind of stuff. And I'm going to be um, in charge of the social media buildup that we have going on here at Big Daddy Enterprises. That's so, called propaganda. Yes, exactly. 
the minister of propaganda or something like that. I don't yeah. want to steal that from Brown no, Ellis. Those, no, those are my dudes. I'm not trying to steal their thing. You stay really in good like graces with the boys. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I like hanging out with those guys. And we have something really badass coming up that yeah. um, once I get the approvals to start putting stuff out there, we'll be sharing that with road you guys. Trip. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, we, we have the road trip coming up. So please <laughs> click the thumbs up, share this with your friends. Let everyone know that we're out there. Use all the hashtags like, Hashtag jazz hands, hashtag big girl panties, hashtag cow cocky. I'm looking, there's a board over here. Hashtag who moved my freedom or uh, podcast or WMMF podcast. Uh, you can just come up with your own hashtags if you Hag want. Hashtag laser whitening. Ooh. Yeah, laser. So, uh, so I, got, I got something to throw out there. What? You guys see the hottest new gun of uh, 2018? The hottest? Oh God, I know. Hottest it opinion. <laughs> by Smith and Wesson. It's on my channel right now. It's an exclusive to my channel. Yes. I do have a. I like your pimpery. I like your pimpery, uh, Babyface <laughs> B. I like how you're pimping. <laughs> Go ahead, tell the folks what you have going on before. Well, well it's an exclusive from Smith and Wesson. If you want to see it. Go go to my channel. You, you yes, can go to like, baby to dash p baby no baby dash face p. <laughs> no, you don't have to do it now. You can do it later. But there's a uh, open a separate window. There's a Smith and Wesson on there. That's that's only me. It's only my gun. <laughs> yeah, if you if you're one of those people that really likes the Glock 19x, oh man, Smith and Wesson has something awesome for you. He's and trolling us. <laughs> yeah, baby face p has an exclusive on that. And if you go over to his channel, open up a window. You guys can look at it. I encourage you when you're over there to subscribe and everything to the channel. Uh, let me scroll through this real quick and give everyone a shout out here before we get lost. David G says, happy Monday, music lover. What's going on? He says, got my coffee with Bailey's and my uh, uh, sushi. Sushi. I'm, I'm assuming he <laughs> meant sushi. It's, it looks like sushi, but uh, Chris Bullis, what's going on? He says, uh, then get... Uh, filthy with Wango Tango. I don't even know what's oh, going on. Oh, this is here. getting weird up in here. Yeah, I'm. I probably missed the beginning of this <laughs> of this uh, stream of consciousness. Uh, Kentucky Firearms Networks here. Chris B. Michael Bender. Uh, let's see who else. Uh, music lover that I said. Tango Hunter. Oh. Um, Joe Carpenter. He says I have a eight track with Wango Tango on it. I don't Wango, even know Tango, what that's. Wango, 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 Tango, Wango, 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 Wango. Oh, that's um. That's Ted that's Nugent. Nugent. Ted, Ted Nugent, Nugent man. right? Yeah, Ted Nugent. Wang Tang, Sweet Poom Tang. Woo! <laughs> Blazin twelve twelve says I want a rifle from every major power in World War Two. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's easy. That's not hard to do. That's not hard to that's do. Not hard to do. No. Okay. I see you are G. Ninety eight. Ninety eight Mauser. Carcano from Italy. They're cheap. Uh, Carcano's because they're garbage. Aren't they? Well, they shoot all right, though. Jap, Jap gun, Arsaka. Um, then you got Arsaka, the Mosin, Mosin the Gaunt, and yep. M1 Garand or Carbine. You got it. Boom. Oh, I got that's the whole it. list. That's behind. all the guns who were around in World War II. That's See, the I major the, ones. The majors. There you go. Yeah. There's, there's the whole list right there. Oh, there you go. Hold on. Let's lock it. Wait a second. Let's lock it on there, baby. Well, I actually have most of those. I don't have a Carcano right now, but yeah. How many of those um, do you have, Patrick? Oh, goodness. Uh, let's see. I don't have a Mauser. I need to get a Mauser. Oh, I forgot. Infield. Infield. An infield. You got to get an infield. Yeah. So they have a number four, Mark One Infield, Arasaka, M1 Garand. I have that. I have that. Hey, hey Yang Type 88. I guess it was a. I don't that's, know what a that was. that's like a Mauser commission rifle, I think, that the Chinese use. It. Mosin, the Carcano Modelo 38, the Mauser K98, and then the Moss Modelo 36. Oh, okay. Well, I have most so of them. I guess if you want a baby French face. Baby. Oh, and then you got the French rifle. The, uh, I have 30 one of seconds. those. <laughs> I have a Moss. I have a Moss. Yeah. Baby face has never taken down those freaking lights. Hell no. <laughs> on that thing. They decorate my wall. <laughs> those are never. <laughs> Next Christmas, we're going to be What's here, and he's going to have those lights up, man. <laughs> oh, wait. So I should show up? you. can't see it from here. We still got our lights up in the family room. Oh, oh man. Yeah. My Christmas tree just went out to the curb today. But, oh, you're supposed to keep lights up till the 6th. Yeah. Um, I'm almost embarrassed, but you guys know that I'm I'm never totally embarrassed to say anything. We never <laughs> even put up a Christmas tree. <laughs> Was there a Christmas tree, Lola? Was there? A, I don't think so. I don't remember well, seeing a Christmas a tree, tree in the house. Town, so. Yeah. Um, if we would have we been just, a town, we, we were just so tree. yeah. We were just it was just so crazy, but you know we did hang out at home with the boys and. You know, we had Christmas dinner and all that kind of stuff. My boys, um, to, to add more embarrassment, like my son is doing terribly 
at oh, FSU. Really? This is his first year. He's uh, they already yes. put his they already put his butt on academic probation. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. he's not doing. He needs to get his his shit together. I meant to tell you to talk to him when he was over there. I mean, I've been giving him lectures and uh, telling him off and all what's that. He, kind of what's stuff. he having issues with? He uh, he's it, eighteen. It, he's eighteen. That's um, what his issue is. Nobody's. You know, these nobody's, damn. He's a, 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 a. Is he a millennial officially? Yeah, I because think so. yeah, he's he's acting like that. <laughs> so he needs to get his act together. So you know, unfortunately, my. Well, fortunately, actually, for my children, but it's unfortunate, I think, sometimes that they didn't suffer like Lola and I, you know? I was going to say, college is a learning experience. You really have to – I think a lot of freshmen hit that, like, real hard on their freshman year, and they're like, oh, shit, i got to get my crap together. Yeah. And He's doing awesomely in the improv and acting and all that. Well, I don't do nothing. <laughs> Anybody know. can do that shit. That, that I don't care about. You Anybody know can do that. You don't have to go to college yeah. to do that. That yeah. he's doing awesomely. His comedy career or whatever the hell he has going on. That's awesome. I can't imagine either of your kids these... having a comedy career. They're so no, quiet I, all the time. Well, he's actually in the improv club. Yeah, well, that's um, probably part of the problem, actually. Yeah, exactly. So, we you know, we got to kick him in the butt and make him do what he needs to do. So let, here, I know let some me... of the pressers over there. I could get you them do? on his ass. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, absolutely. Dude, I Please, do. Over. Please do. And if I anyone... used to theater up in Tallahassee, so I know okay. a bunch of the people up there. If anyone goes to FSU or anyone's kids goes to Body FSU, him. please <laughs> embarrass him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> please embarrass him. He needs it. So um, there we go. Let's see here. I'm going to scroll through and finish the shout outs to everyone. I think I said uh, Kentucky Firearms Network, Blazing 1212. C4 Defense says, hey, guys, Joe Carpenter. Oh, let's see. Let's see who else in here. Gorillas and Guns. Gorillas I, ran and into, guns I, ran into, I ran into at least three viewers at the Machine Gun. Oh, table. really? Which what ones you did really? you see? Who um, did you see? I'm terrible, and I apologize if I don't remember everybody. I, I told them all to call, you know, to say something at the, during, during the show and, and remind me. Oh, okay. Um, so if anyone ran into Walter, you went out there and shot with Walter, please let us know. Yeah. Um, and I, I hope and you got I offered, some swag. I offered everybody a chance to uh, do something or shoot. I mean, I gave swag out the whole nine yards. I didn't charge any of our viewers for stuff. So sweet, awesome. Yeah. So uh, those guys got the Hank Strange discount. Yes, they did. Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> to everyone who got the Hank Strange discount, you're welcome. <laughs> Push the like button, quick. Yes, make sure you are liking this right now. Um, we've got like uh, I don't know how many people. I can't see all the way over there. Yeah, it looks like so, look, kind of like ninety that. something people we've got in here. Everyone needs to hit the uh, thumbs ups, please. We need it. We need appreciate it. All that kind of good stuff. You guys make sure you hit the thumbs ups. Uh, did I say gorillas and guns? I saw a new gun. Speaking of new guns, woo! This magazine came today. I get it. it they sent it to me, trying to get me to advertise. And um, it? it's a. You're, uh, we were talking the other day about ten millimeter. It's right. a European European American arms um Tangfanglio or Tangfanglio, how do you say it? Oh, that's but the uh, and ten millimeter. Oh really? Hold on, let's oh, see okay. that. Hold on, let me lock it. Wait, 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 let me lock it on you. Tangfolio, I think that's how it's called. Yeah, how do you say it? Yeah. Fourteen plus one ten millimeter. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so it basically looks, you know, it looks good. It looks good. reasonably priced. Yeah. Oh yeah, and, and, and your stuff is I, I got that one that I bought. It's mm-hmm. a nine, but it's it's decent made. I mean, you know, I think I, they're Turkish guns. They're Italian. They're Italian guns. They're oh, Italian. Okay, okay. These are made in Italy. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Did, so did basically, you miss basically, the, the, the Tangfolio? <laughs> basically, they're CZ 75s, basically. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a clone. Oh, so they're Italian CZ 75s? Uh, you know, right. they're cloning a good gun, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Does that mean they don't work on Saturdays and Sundays? <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop it. <laughs> Uh, no, I was watching. I was. I swear, I was watching an episode of Top Gear years ago where they went to Italy, and I think it was a Sunday, right? So they were driving on the roads, and the police yeah. pulled them over and <laughs> shut down the whole thing because the cameramen were not allowed to work on Sunday. No, oh. that is a what? law in the Italy's. In the Italy's, yeah, <laughs> you are not allowed to work on. No Sunday. work for you. Yeah. Um, Shout out to Peter Muchko. He says he's here. Yes. Um, let's see. 904s is in here. I see the Tyvin show. Um, Buddy Channel says hello from Ohio. John Gillian. He says, what's up? He says, what's up, panty people? <laughs> nice. Panty? <laughs> yeah. Hashtag panty people. You panty liner, you. Yeah. Um, uh, we've got uh, Mike Sykes. 
John Gillian says, what's up, Walter? I don't know if that's one of the people you saw out there. Well, uh, please. It, it, yeah, I'm sorry. Like I said, I don't remember everybody's name because I'm like yeah. brain dead half the time. But um, yeah. <laughs> Blazing1212 says Sig P365. He likes it, I think. I think he likes it. I'm not sure what that means. Tim Not Tim says, Good evening, Walter. Good evening. Uh, Tony, Tony London says, Greetings, strangers. Go Gators, he says. Go Gators, not Jags. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought I thought the um, – didn't, didn't the Jags – didn't they do good? I don't know what's going on. Yeah, what happened? Um, Jackson, well, New Orleans won the game they played, so I know that. Oh, so. oh, well, there you go. See, that's what I know about sports. Well, I just, that's just because some, my dad called me. We're sitting there. And we don't watch any football at home. Sorry, right. I don't watch football. Mm -hmm. um, and he goes, and he, and he calls, and he calls Peggy's phone. I go, hello? And he goes, New Orleans won. It was great. And I'm like, okay. All right, well, <laughs> okay. Well, they win. <laughs> they won their uh, game, I guess. They'll did, go wait, further. did it? Go ahead. Just to advance in the playoffs. Yeah. So. Did any of us win the lottery? Oh, fuck. Yeah. I didn't even check. Somebody Lolo, won it close to check me, it actually. The, oh, one, really? the, Mega, the Mega Millions ticket was picked up in um, Newport Ritchie, which is up where, up where my friend okay. Sean lives, up, not far oh. away from there. So Someone in Newport Ritchie, I call dibs. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good call. <laughs> yeah, I knew you were going to try to beat that me That was a good it. call. Maybe it's like you could be the sh honey honey daddy for some old lady or something. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm already, I'm already that for Lola. I don't know. <laughs> Lola's not old lady. Um, uh, I'm Lola's gigolo. Just a gigolo. What are you, what are you just another picture, another picture of that uh, Tang Fangle or whatever the hell yeah. it is. <laughs> it looks yeah. good. It looks yeah, no, I was impressed. No, as soon as I saw the photo in the front, I said, damn, that's a good looking gun, you know? Yeah, so, it's kind of, especially you know, I might have to get a 10 millimeter now. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. Oh really? Oh really? Yeah. Yes. Really. Oh really? <laughs> that is total discrimination. You didn't want to get the damn high point. <laughs> now well, you're gonna it's... get. Now you're gonna get the tank folio. Really? I... Hmm. Take, the the take, the, take the plastic off a high point carbon, and you won't want to get one either. Yeah. Um, if that's I don't you know Scott Kimball says what's up everyone what's going on Scott. Um, uh, Recall Junkie 1981. Let's see who else we got here. It looks like uh, Kevin Dixie's coming in here. Hey. Uh, Nate 408, Brandon. Oh, it's a wife taking over. Kevin. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Kevin, had, yeah. Kevin had some changes over Whoa, the winter break. Dear. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. This is this is the mom of the cuteness. Uh, we'll just, you know what? We'll just call you the hotness. Did <laughs> <laughs> it work? Yeah. What's going on? That much? How y'all? Oh, we're right. good. We're right. good. All this right. is we're awesome. Good. So we don't have to deal with Kevin today. I think. <laughs> oh, I'm awesome. Taking over. Oh, that's no, awesome. No bro. red tonight. No red on the <laughs> Um, Are you? Blue and purple. Oh, okay. Are you a fan of HK? <laughs> yes, I am a fan of HK. Oh, okay. All right. We're going to that, that. We'll forgive you. Anything to do with that. <laughs> huh? <laughs> and not that Kevin has anything to do with that. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Sure he doesn't. <laughs> Okay, now um, you're you're like a principal or something, right? So we have to we have yeah. to not uh, do we have to not curse around you? <laughs> nope, yeah. you can curse. None of my colleagues watch this show. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> okay. Oh, so that's why you guess. Well, I guess it's okay to come on with us. Yes. <laughs> no one else is gonna see me commingling with you people. <laughs> not at all. Yeah. Not so at all. so okay. how is how's everything going in uh, St. Louis today? Everything's going well in St. Louis. Um, I wish we had a snow day today, but that didn't work out. Oh. <laughs> and Kevin has been hating on my snow days. Oh. He's like, go to bed because you're going to work tomorrow. And I was like, really? Am I ice tonight? <laughs> He's like, no, you're going. <laughs> and we yeah. went. Yeah, you know, Kevin is a hater. We know this. Yeah. We, we know this. No day. Yeah. We we know this over here. You know, he, he hates us because we're beautiful. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if anyone has more guns than him, he hates them. <laughs> Right. I'm, on, I'm on the list then. So yeah, if he didn't get his 50 from Walter, he hates him. <laughs> yeah, we know, we know. Patience, grasshopper. Patience. Yeah, absolutely. So what do you do on the snow days? On snow days, nothing. <laughs> I <just> stay home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Talk a lot. So does Kevin have snow days, or does he still have to go to work on? I guess he doesn't uh, get snow days. Goes, but some days he pulls the. I'll just stay here with y'all and and work from home. Oh, mm. <laughs> yeah. You should say no. How about you work from work? 
Right. <laughs> Whatever happened to work from work? What happened to the days in America when people worked from their job? Right. Now everyone has to work from home. Uh, yeah. I used to do that. Yeah. I worked from my backyard. Mm -hmm. Oh, here comes the cuteness, too. Uh oh. Uh oh. And she's got a crown on. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Did we freeze up? Did it freeze up? Uh -oh. Oh, oh, there we go. Okay, there's the cuteness. There she goes. There she goes. She's waving. How you doing? Hey. Awesome. See all, all the Tyler Queen. Yeah, that, all the beautiful Dixie women are here. Yeah. The the uh, only beauty in the Dixie household is here. No, well, you know what? I'll I'll give your son some props. I'll give your son some props. <laughs> you know, he's a good-looking young man, Kevin. Um, we don't know. Are we sure that Kevin <laughs> is? You know, did we do like genetic tests and everything here? <laughs> right. Don't okay. open Monday. Y'all just talk about anything. Yeah. yeah. So yes. we want go ahead. Go test us. Go ahead. Yeah, exactly. What do you want to talk about? So, okay. So in in the field that I work in, you have these random things about, oh my goodness, we gotta keep our kids safe and they have to be safe at school and they have to be safe at home. So it puts us in an awkward position because it's like, hmm, we have to measure their safety. So I want to say this to all you responsible gun owners who are introducing your Scott, your children to firearms and telling them all about firearms and they're getting used to it and enjoying the sport of shooting. You must remind them that they cannot bring the shell casing. <laughs> they cannot come to school. That is not something that they should bring to school. So if you've been to the range and they were there with you and they's like, oh, this one's cool and this one's cool, this one's cool, check their backpack. Check your pockets. Yeah. Check their pockets because they're like, I can't wait to show this to someone else. <laughs> <laughs> Did this happen? <laughs> Did this yeah, happen recently? It, it, <laughs> oh, do you guys have a zero tolerance policy of this? Well, zero tolerance to like the level of offense that happens. So this family, and it's funny now because everybody has met Kevin. It's like, well, let Dixie deal with it. Or Dixie is, <laughs> is this really? Oh, wait, everyone calls him Dixie? Oh, it's on now. <laughs> <laughs> they call me Dixie. They call him Kevin. Oh, oh okay. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, I see. Okay. So we like, can't call. Dixie, she can tell us if this is harmful or not. And I was like, it's just a shell. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> hold on, hold on. If it's what? <laughs> the, the people don't know whether or not a shell casing is harm <laughs> harmful. Relax, guys. It's going to be all right. Oh, it's wow. Right. And then you talk to the parent and they're like, they like, they, well, you talk to them and find out if they're lying or not. Mm -hmm. They we do some parents just take their kids to the ranges it's okay and yeah. this family goes often so we always have that conversation but okay so you guys didn't suspend this kid right no okay good that's, that's first good, of all yeah. applause yeah, it's so that. silly what they do yeah. to the kids you know yeah so it's like mom mm -hmm. you got to have the whole conversation <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. the whole conversation so parents talk to your kids about what they cannot take to school yeah, um, um, 904, Steve from 904 says they can't take an empty shell casing to school. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Wow. Where we live, uh, kids used to take hunting rifles to school to go hunting after school. Had Ooh, enough gotcha. common sense about safety. Wow. Yeah, I know. Same thing where I live. But, you know, we live in this world today and it's not you have to try to be careful because obviously you don't want your kid to get kicked out of school and arrested and all the other crazy stuff that goes yeah, along with it. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't think a shell don't point casing. Don't your finger at anybody. Don't point your fingers. You know. Exactly. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't think a shell casing rises to that, especially when it was obviously you know empty. accidental. Empty. Yeah. Empty. Now, empty. if your kid was just in a drive-by, <laughs> and lots of shell casings ejected into his backpack accidentally <laughs> during that drive-by, that's like you know totally. <laughs> I think a totally different situation. What? Totally different situation. Yeah. But no, just responsible parents who just forgot to say, you can't take that to school. You can't do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also, like the kid might have thought, oh, this was really cool. Let me, you know, do this. But no, save those for your play dates. Unfortunately, kids don't really have play dates anymore, man. Their friends don't come over and hang out, mm -hmm. you know, like we used to do. They, they, you know how the, my kids hung out with their friends? On the yeah. internet. Yeah. On the internet and video games. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's like the unfortunate thing of it. And they and you know what? When they're doing that, they're doing lots of shooting. They think because they play all these uh, games <laughs> with extra. guns. 
Yeah, Brad. they know everything about guns. They're <laughs> experts. They've apparently been in the in the battlefield during World War II. <laughs> you know, well, you know, I'm kind of glad they, I'm kind of glad after this weekend, I'm kind of glad they play those games because I made close to 200 bucks to people like that. Yeah, well, oh, from kids wanted to shoot my guns. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, like, what age? What age kids were you seeing come uh, by? No, it wasn't kid. Kid. I mean, there was one that was probably a teenager, but. Mm -hmm. Most of them were probably if early twenties, and then there was some older guys too. Oh, okay. So I just charged twenty bucks a mag. Okay. Much, so. That's no, I'm trying bad. to do a summer yeah. shooting camp. Twenty dollars a mag. Oh, I, I need to become an FFL in 07 and start making some stuff. Yeah, yeah. actually, <laughs> Miss, Miss Dixie has a really good idea there. A shooting summer camp. That sounds like a dream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be awesome. Well, yeah. I mean, a lot of people that don't get a chance to shoot. They, mm -hmm. they just they just can't contain themselves when they get to go shooting. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and he loves a new shooter. My mama was terrified of our arm. <laughs> he met Kevin, <laughs> <laughs> and it was all over with. All over. <laughs> yeah. The best thing is the, the best thing is to get some females that are all anti-gun mm -hmm. and get them out and go shooting. And once they shoot, they get empowered. Yeah, you know? and screaming. Like, go ahead. Oh, this is cool. You know? Yeah, Screaming Skull Saloon says Kevin's wife is the first female guest. Yes, indeed. Right. She yes. is. This is official. Yeah, this is is the first. Is Yay. Now, all you have to do to make it official, you got to show us some guns. Right. Hold on. Let me go get it. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> okay, you're going to get the guns right all now. All in the reinforcements. <laughs> Yeah, Richard Hughes says shooting camp. Can I go? You know what? So we should do a shooting camp. <laughs> An adult yeah. shooting camp. That basically is just training, right? <laughs> no, we're gonna shoot for fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shooting camp. We camp. You got to start a fire. You got to cook your own food, and then you get to shoot. If you don't do that stuff, you don't get to shoot. That's <laughs> that's, that's camp. So yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I guess that's the only one there. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Yeah. Well, I gotta ask a question: Is that hat or that crown part of your outfit, or is that a separate piece? Um, I got it from my teacher. Nice. It's got writing on it. Mm-hmm. It says "Sight Word Queen." Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I missed that. I got my sight words. Oh, okay. So those were those are your words on there. What's the words? Say or something other. Say what? Say, say word queen, and then it says hundred percent. Nice. Okay. Out of here, mom. Oh, oh, I like how your mom deals with you. <laughs> get, get, get girl, get. <laughs> yeah, she's got dad wrapped all around the fingers. <laughs> oh, look at yeah. Is this a Glock 43? No, no. I think it's 43, right? Yeah. Is this a 40? No. What are we looking at here? 42. 42? Yeah. Oh, okay. There you go. Awesome. Is this I yours? Oh, nice. I'm thinking of getting that for Marley. Yes. It's a sweet gun. Yeah. Yeah. She, and, doesn't, you know, she mm -hmm. doesn't like the 9 millimeter as much. So she shot my 43 and she's doesn't like the nine as much I, I feel like she would like the 380 a little bit more. <laughs> yeah you know when the glock 42 came out we all hated it me included <laughs> and then um i actually went to shot show which we're about to go to in a couple of weeks and um at shot show gunny was there at media day oh, and God. and i went up to the to the glock booth and gunny was there and i was talking to him and everything you know i've always seen him in movies and yeah but he was awesome and everything and he was like hey why don't you you know what do you think about the Glock 42? Have you shot it yet? And I was like, no, nah, I hate that thing. That's, that's garbage. <laughs> and Gunny was like, listen, man, oh, in the beginning, he said in the beginning, he didn't, you know, he didn't, he didn't like the idea of a Glock 42 or anything like that either. I think Gunny likes his Glock. I think he's got some kind of 10 millimeter Glock. So anyway, he said, listen, for me, you should go over there and shoot that thing. And I went and shot it, and I was like, wow, this is really cool. And and when we got back, I bought one. And then when the 43 came out, I got the 43, but I actually – and then I sold the 42. And then you were like, oh, this is way better. <laughs> well, no, I sold the 42, but you know what? I should have kept the 42, man. I'm going to get another no, one. No, the person who oh, bought the 42 needs to make it full auto. 
Yeah. Oh, no, that was that, that was a different one that Walter bought when I got oh, my. Uh, okay. Yeah, I have my FFL. When I got my FFL, I sold one to Walter. I sold a Glock 42 to him. It's a pretty good gun. How, how are you yeah. liking it, Miss Dixie? I love it. I love it much better than the snub nose, re snub nose revolver I wanted. Oh. Because <laughs> it, like, it was short and cute, and I didn't, I didn't want it to eject. The oh, okay, thing. okay, that makes sense. Yeah, and then Kevin was like, "No, ma'am." Oh, David. David. Like, you play it to see what happens, and I was like, "Oh no!" He was like, "Right, all the power is in your hand." <laughs> yeah. Well, see, that's the thing. I think um, prototypically, yeah. women but I always. Love one now. Yeah, women always gravitate to the revolvers. I don't know if it's the stores or who. Well, it's pushes them it's in also that it's also a point and shoot thing. You don't have to manipulate. You don't have to. Yeah, you don't have to rack the slide. A lot of people, a lot of people cannot work the slide. They can never get that slide thing going on. No, because Kevin had a Springfield when we first got together and trying to rack a, that forty-five. I was like, nope, I'll take a okay. revolver. So, so we, can we? We're gonna get a little bit personal here, if you don't mind, for a second. <laughs> No, okay. it's not what you think. It's not what you think. Can we see your hands? Can we see your hands if you don't mind? Uh, just flip it around the other way. I want to see if you have nails. Okay. See, there you go. You don't have nails. Because what I was going to say is some women are encumbered oh, the, yeah, the nails, by the yeah. length of the long ass nails that they must have. A little strange. Um, <laughs> you know, and so that's why sometimes they have problems racking the slide. I mean, I've seen I've seen adult males that can't figure out. How You've to seen work adult males with long ass nails? No, it can't work the slide, you homo. Oh, <laughs> my nails! Look, those are too long. Oh, wait, wait, let's see. Show them again. Oh, wait, that hold is on. Nothing. Let me, let me, that is a perfect I mean, Look, that's some, too, some of these women got these claws coming oh out. My gosh. Yeah. Those are no, not Lola too wants long. claws. She wants claws. Okay, I don't get want out of here. Claws. I just you, want a French don't try to don't try to be coming on the show. You won't let me have a French manicure. We already, we already have a guest. So anyway, yeah, uh, they're not that long right now, but that gets in the way sometimes. I think, mm -hmm. you know, no, and, and it could hurt if you if you if you're oh, in yeah. a panic and you're trying to do things and all that, it can get in the way. But you know, I'm not trying to say that you can't have your nails, but okay. I think sometimes that um, that like pushes women, all those different things push women in the direction of using revolvers. So tell us why the revolver didn't work for you. Cause I didn't like the the babe. What you call it? Oh, that's hot! Oh my god, that's hot! <laughs> <laughs> I got food. That's what oh. I want. got. A bowl of chicken gumbo. Oh, okay. Ooh. Yeah, the I, I guess not the recoil, but I don't like the when it comes back. Mm -hmm. The yeah, pressure, the felt recoil in your hand. I I've it's never liked that either. It, it's it's like a bolt action versus a semi-auto rifle. The bolt actions always have so much more recoil to them. Yeah, yeah I think revolver, talking about revolver versus automatic. Yeah, yep. yeah. So, babyface, where's your? You've got a really nice revolver. You do have a revolver, even though you're saying you don't like them. Where's that revolver? I know. Okay, I love. I love this revolver. <laughs> I wouldn't carry it every day. It's oh, too really? Big. You wouldn't One carry it every day. <laughs> oh, look at that! that. Yeah, you, I don't. I don't that. understand what you're saying, babyface. <laughs> That you is you're saying guy. you wouldn't carry it every day? No. That is a true Rick Grimes stainless <laughs> python. Yeah, there you go. Oh, you think you, you're not the only one rolling with a python? This is not my python. Oh, right? I know. <laughs> yeah, this belongs to Big Daddy. <laughs> oh, man, that's a nice one, too. How's that yeah. trigger on it? Oh, it's nice, man. Heaven? It's nice. Ooh, yeah. It's a nice trigger on there. <laughs> you need you a know, he, we, we should have a We should have a revolver day. I'll yeah, we should have a python day. Actually, I got a couple of them. Yeah, you he heard, not Python, not Python. Wait, you've got, oh, okay. oh, you don't have a Python? Oh, okay. Yeah. So, I'm sorry, Walter, you can't be in the club. I used to have a Dan Wesson 44 mag with about three different barrels, but yeah, it's all done. This is uh, the nicest, 100%. This is the nicest gun in my collection. Yeah, absolutely. The Python's and, very nice, and this is a nice one. He told me he actually got this for 2500 bucks. Yeah, that's, that's about right. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. They're very nice gun. Yeah. They're, not, they're nice definitely gun. not cheap guns. Yeah. I really, really like it, so I just figured, you know, I just wanted to surprise you with that. Oh, that six, you that six inch, <laughs> that dirty hairy yeah. style. Woo. That's right. You know, I mean, I'm I'm usually I'm used to something a little bit, you know, handling something with a little bit more girth than that, but <laughs> six inches is nice anyway. All right, so <laughs> so what do you think about those revolvers? Missy? Those are nine. Those are nine. Okay. So but you yeah, know, nothing I could carry every day. Yeah, but these are target I, revolvers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a big upgrade from the 22 I had. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> so do you have any revolvers now or you don't have revolvers? We do have revolvers, but what's the name of the revolver we have? Notice I said we. <laughs> Are you talking to someone off screen? Yes. Who is that you're talking to? I don't understand. No, there's there can't be anyone off screen that you're talking to. I have, a, I have a Smith and Wesson. 64 K frame. 64 K frame. 64. What's the special plus P? I sense somehow I sense you don't have this. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, <laughs> Kevin has this. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Well, he's yeah. ready now, guys. Thanks for yeah. letting me join Free For All Monday. Oh, thank you so yeah, much for coming on and being welcome. our first guest here. Yeah, absolutely. It was great. Uh, matter of fact, we don't even need Kevin. You can stay yeah. if you want. <laughs> we, don't, you know, we don't need to see Kevin at all. You'd be shocked at what he's wearing. Oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, oh no. And by shock, on let me angle. guess. Wait a second. My magical psychic powers tell me that he's wearing something red, and it's gonna have. It's going to have the letters H and the letters K in it. Let's see. Where is he? Oh, he's not there. He's not there. I don't know where he is. Right? I have a gunny story if you want to hear it. Sure. Absolutely. I don't know if I told us before or not. At one of the um, SoFix shows, or I call it the SoCom show in Tampa, years ago when we did that show, um, mm -hmm. we, went, we got some knives made. They were like, um, we got them laser engraved with the date and the SoFix on them and all that stuff. So he was set up there with Glocks. So I went over to his um, place and I brought one of the knives and I said, here, here's a letter opener for you. So I gave him the knife, you know, and he goes, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Calls one of the Glock guys over and said, go back there, get something. He comes back out with a Glock oh, knife. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh, we got to lock this signed in. It, signed it for me. Are we? And, uh, me. Yeah, nice. Those Glock knives are kind of cool. I didn't know much about them until I got one, but yeah, they're they're cool, you know. That's how Glock got started. Wait, they got know. started making knives? Yeah, oh, really? Oh, I didn't yes. know that. Yes, for the for the Austrian army. Huh. And and he even had some problems with that, you know, getting it right for them. But and then that's how he from that he went into the pistols. So oh, that's cool. my Arlie Ar Army story. One of them anyway. So he's a cool guy. He's a yeah, cool Arlie guy. Army is an awesome dude. Like when He'll we talk remember... to you, spend time with you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We um we uh remember even at SEMA show, he goes to SEMA show, and the line is, like, ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Anytime it, at SHOT Show, it's insane. People are, like, lined up, wrapped around SHOT Show. Doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah. Nope. But he's he's probably, like, the coolest dude at SHOT Show. Yeah. Nope. Look at this. For celebs. <laughs> oh. I guess I was wrong about red, but. Yes. Was, Look. What? He now, went and changed his shirt because I was talking about him. He went to change his shirt. I'm pretty sure of it. He changed. Yeah, everybody changed his shirt. I happen to want to rock green today. No, no, don't even try it. <laughs> yeah, whatever. You know, yeah, I got. Really? You know, I'm still coordinating. I'm all right. Yeah. I don't think it is Kevin Dixie. It must be an imposter. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> really? he's, he's got red on him somewhere. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, his socks are red, or his shoes are red. Actually, my socks are lime green. Oh, damn! You coordinate yeah. down to your socks, man. What? Seriously? <laughs> hey, man, I'm just saying. They don't match this green. They're just lime green. Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't even know what to say, man. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, wait a minute. More more Arlie Ermey stuff. Oh, oh, oh another, another time we saw him, we bought this. Uh, I saw him. Oh, Peggy did it. Peggy did it. It's from uh, <laughs> from Toy Story of the oh. Army Men because he did the boys for that. Mm -hmm. Right? So she got him to sign the box, and he was like, wow, I haven't done this too often, I guess. It's getting somebody <laughs> oh, to sign the box. Cool. And he gave us a challenge coin. Gave her a challenge. Nice. Coin. Yeah. Yes, that's very cool. I actually have one of those. I would, you know, should okay. bring it into the studio. The challenge mm -hmm. coin. Are people still doing the challenge coin thing? Um. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, they do. You want? I heard a story about our Secretary of Defense and the challenge coin. He got asked if if he has challenge coins, and he says, "No, I'm not spending the money on challenge coins. I'm spending the money on bombs." <laughs> That's right, baby. <laughs> you see, yeah. uh, there was a story about Trump's challenge coin, which is, um, you know, normally they just get a round coin. His has got shape to it and all this different stuff. It's oh, really, really? Okay. it's really Trump. It's really Trump. So, oh, so so who has that? Do we know anyone that has the uh, Trump challenge coin? I don't yeah, know. You'd have, know. To, you'd have to have that probably that probably trumps pun intended everything else. Yeah, you'd have to have a up and close and personal encounter with him to get that. So, 
Yeah, Kentucky Firearms Network says yes, people still do them. Okay, cool. Wow, so, yeah, the Trump Challenger coin is fancy. So Woo. what are the rules? Who knows the rules of the Trump challenge of not Trump challenge mm -hmm. coin, but just challenge coins in general? What's what's the etiquette or the rules <laughs> of those? Who knows? I have no idea. I don't. Um, well, if you're at a bar, I feel I've been talking about and you challenge somebody with a coin, they don't that one. I think they gotta buy. I've heard that. Yeah, yeah, but but what is it like? So if you have a coin, how do you know if that person's coin is ranked higher than your coin? I don't Let's know. See, I'll look it up. Challenge coin. Maybe Face will get it for us. Rules. So Firearms Net Kentucky Firearms Network says I have a bag of M and M's off Air Force One. What? Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty did you, cool. Did you get it off of Air Force One, or, or how did that? Or you happen? steal it from the um, from the people supplying it to Air Force One? Oh, I'm sorry. Right. Yeah, Mr. Runyon says I think high school should add. Uh, firearms competitions as extracurricular activities. I totally agree with that. They used to have those. Yeah. They used to have that. Um, that. And that was a good conversation that we had. Uh, and, and you know what? I, I really enjoy the fact that Miss Dixie is a um, an administrator or something like that in the school, right, Kevin? Yep. And she's she's pro-gun and everything. I think that was cool. That was a cool little conversation with her. Yeah. Uh, you know what? You know what I want to ask, Kevin? And um, you know, to me, it's like a mystery wrapped inside of enigma. What the hell? Why does she marry you, man? What's... You know what, man? <laughs> did you did you like hypnotize her, drug her, poison her? You know did, what? Did did you guys go over there and kidnap her from her family? I mean, is she missing? <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna tell you how how, 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 how I upgrade her. Tell you how. You upgraded. Okay. Yeah, you upgraded. You know, now I was praying that she wouldn't see that she was actually upgrading me, so I had to, you know, kind of. You know, uh -huh. but now she um she had a, a heck of a um I'll, I'll try to get the minutes filled, but we 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 dated for a minute. Um, she had the the a proposal that you just couldn't say no to. Is what happened. First of all, uh, when I I was the first man to ever actually set to take her to a place nice enough where you had to set a reservation to go. Oh dear. <laughs> okay. That's either that's no, either a very bad thing about yeah, that's her. Bad. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> I, so I, you know, and, uh -huh. and I had the educator, you know, while we were there, she was, uh, she asked the people, "Can I have a a lobster bisque?" And I was, I just laughed. I'm like, uh -huh. <laughs> lobster bisque. She was like, "Oh, reservations and you can speak." Oh, so you're trying to say that you were more sophisticated? I know. Than her? I'm not trying to say one here. Sophisticated. I'm saying that's the only trick I had, and I'm glad it worked. That's what. <laughs> oh. When Kevin, when Kevin drinks his tea, he has his pinky out. For yeah, sure. exactly. <laughs> uh, where's your cups, dudes? Even though we change things, I still got my cup here. Let's throw those teacups in the air. Let's there see. Okay, go. hold on. You got to talk. Throw your, your your teacup up here. Let me let me switch through. Okay, Babyface has got one. Kevin's got one right there. <laughs> there goes there goes Walter with the teacups. This is you know what? We need to rent out these teacups right here. Like what company out there? Oh, Lola wants me to do the finger thing. Yeah, um, out. Lola, I'll do the finger thing with you later. If in doubt, okay. think about. um <laughs> So what companies? What companies out there? Yeah, you know, we got some. We got some available space. <laughs> we got some available spaces on these teacups. You know, we could brand. Oh, no, that's right. Who's the branding for tonight? Yeah, let's uh, well, let's brand. Gotta, yeah. Let's brand the tea. Okay, Lola's really mad. <laughs> oh, sorry. I heard her say, "You bastard! You son of a bitch!" <laughs> I would just say that she actually got proposed to on a yacht. Your wife, really, very nice. Whoa, did you what? Oh yeah, she. Uh, now the quick rundown is: we went on a vacation for my for my birthday, right? So I was like, look, we're gonna be down here for three days. I just want this one particular night to go to this little show, um, and that's it. You can plan the rest of the trip. So we got down there. Long story short, I had already set all this up from from here at home, and I I called and networked and set everything up. So I wrote her. You know, um, I'm a, I'm a Christian, so it's seven days of completion. So I wrote her. Um, seven poems in a form of notes. So notes in the form of poems. And so she sat in the room. I said, hey, you sit here and I'll be back. But I, you need to follow instructions on this note, but don't open the note until a certain time. Gave her the time. She opened note number one. That poem in poem form led her to the, 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 the resort desk. She got to the resort desk. They gave her two additional poems. Um, they led her to a cab outside. The oh, cab dear. driver took her to a place. He gave her another poem. The dispatcher said something nice over the radio. Okay, all of this is a violation in the man code. I hope you know. 
Because <laughs> you, 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 you just messing it up for everybody else. I know. That's how, this is how Kevin upgraded right here. Yeah. Step your game up. That's all yeah, I got. Right. So I got her. Um, so I'm guessing she was like very wealthy, and you were like, okay, I gotta lock this down. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't the fact that she was uh, necessarily uh, very wealthy, but she was um, smart, educated, employed, cute. Uh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's, got all that's the a points combo. checked you know, off. Like, yeah, you don't run across you very often, so I'm going to uh, do things to keep. Yes, you. no, you did the right thing. You did. I'm not. I am not hating on your pimping. So it let her. It, let her, um, it, it took her to a, the cab. Took her to a, um, a massage parlor, and so at the massage parlor, she walked in. They gave her yet another poem and. It was um she got a hour hour and a half body massage full little spa thing and i actually had i had snuck over there before while the cat was like picking her up i went over to the massage place and i dropped off a full outfit that was purse shoes uh accessories um everything head to toe dropped off the whole outfit uh new underwear like the whole nine yards um so she even left a, a trash bag for her to put her old clothes in see and um so she got the massage then she got dressed in that the cab came back, picked her up, and gave her one last final poem, and that led her to the dock where the yacht was at, which I was staying. Her favorite, favorite color is purple, so I had on a purple shirt, purple and black tie, red roses wrapped in purple, and I was at Man. the dock waiting on her. And we got on the yacht. Uh, the yacht took sail. Fireworks at this place shoot off real big at 7 o'clock, and the, the, the yacht goes right by the big old fireworks. So I took her out on the, um, I don't know, yachts all that well, but I took her on the back of the thing. And... Um, yeah. Back of the thing somewhere. The and I took her, the, the fan tail. He said I took her. Of it. He we're said I took her in the back of the thing. The, the fan tail. We were back there, and um, the uh -huh. yacht staff knew that I was going to propose, so they came out. They got ready to take pictures, and so at six fifty-eight, I actually got to saying what I was going to say to her in order to propose, and at right at about seven, she almost missed it because she started crying. I uh, got down to one of these to <laughs> say. She started crying. The photographer had to remind her, answer him. So like <laughs> five seconds for the fireworks went off. She said, yes, I put the ring on. And then the fireworks started shooting off in the background. Um, hey, now, let me tell you something. Because, go ahead. Right? Now, oh. now I'm, I'm going to educate you, man, on something else here, right? Give you a little <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, so, boy. you know, how, you know, when you propose, if you give a decent, you know, you say what you got to say, whatever those words are. But, you know, I'm a man that likes to remember what I what I said. And you hold me accountable. So. I remembered my proposal. It was like a paragraph long. So when we got back to our room, there was, I ran back to the room while she was getting a massage. And I set up a nice little area in the room that had the original box of a ring. I had it all set up. I had candles. We really don't drink. So we had some uh, like Welch's little grape stuff, um, wine glasses out. And what I said to her when I proposed, I had framed. So. And what was it? What was oh, it? Oh my God. I don't remember it. It gets oh, why I sprained. Come on, Kevin. That's yeah, all of this. I'm going to It was like seven years ago, dude. Uh, but I framed it, but she can keep it and I always remember the promise I made to her. And then the rest is history, son. That's why I got an FN and a VP9 for Christmas. Hey. Oh, that's what I was saying, man. You Listen, brother, you should have been on Wall Street because <laughs> you are a billionaire level stockbroker. And nope. I'll, tell you, I'll tell you one other thing, man. I... It would be so awesome if I can get the uh, money. If I, we were talking about the lottery. If I could win the lottery, I would get the money to create a time machine to go back in time to pay her off. To after you go through all of that, say nope, nope, nope not gonna do it. No, I'm just kidding. That would have been. How do you? That would have been so heartbreaking, man. Like you know to do all that stuff, but you know what? There's no way in hell, man. Kevin like made sure his, you know, he wasn't getting a no. <laughs> I mean, if Kevin got a no, there was probably like 10 women over there at this point <laughs> like with a yes. The, yeah, the, the uh, rest of the crew in the boat were watching that. I'm gonna get that man. Get yeah, that. it's like, oh, you know, some chick would be like, wait, it's like, uh, did you say no? <laughs> man, it's okay. Cry on my shoulder, because I probably would have been in tears. Mm -hmm. huh. No, that was cool, man. That's very cool. Yeah. I'm a sap you know. for my, my, my wife. I'm a sap for. Her. Yeah, no, that's very, that's really cool. Um, uh, I carry my revolver in single action. Says I went to the courthouse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, boss, boss Hog says Kev, that's what's up. Actually, Lola and I went to the courthouse, but that's a whole other long ass story. Yeah. That's it's not as romantic as yours, Kevin. Yeah, <laughs> you don't you don't even want to hear that one. So because it's because I'm involved. 
So yeah, I know it was uninteresting when you started talking. Yeah, you you know that it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, Boss Hog says don't hate. So there you go. <laughs> Uh, Richard Hughes says, I had a notary public marry us. <laughs> uh, Screaming Skull said he got married on a steamboat. You know, um, we actually, Lola and I went to the courthouse, but it's because, um, you know, I had this, I always had this rule that I had to like know you, date you for three years, live with you for some period of time within that three years. And then I would have to ev evaluate the situation and see whether or not I would even, because I was planning on never getting married. So Lola and I, when we decided we were going to get married, we were supposed to go out to Vegas, which we did. That was the first time we went to Vegas and uh, the we were supposed to get married there, you know, do the whole like thing that you see people doing in the movies, get married yeah. in Vegas. Elvis do it and everything. Else. Yeah, it never happened because somewhere along the way, she all of a sudden decided she was romantic, which Lola <laughs> doesn't have a romantic bone <laughs> in her big boned body. And she decided she was romantic. She was like, oh, you have to get down on your knees and propose to me, which I refused uh -oh. to do. So we would go back and forth. And then I was like, okay, you're like an independent woman. You proposed to me, damn it. <laughs> so she refused uh -huh. to do that. We, we stayed in Vegas for a whole week and didn't get married. So finally, when we got married, it was like, what, like a couple of weeks before my, my first son was born. So, and I was actually already sick. Yeah. Okay. A couple of months before he was born, but Lola had, so basically I was already sick cause I had, I just found out I had Crohn's. So basically I looked like I had AIDS. I think I was oh. down to like 155 pounds or something like that. 120, oh, 120. 120? Yes. Yeah, so I was real, real skinny and Lola had like a big belly cause she was <laughs> pregnant. And so we went to the courthouse to get married. And that day it was, we went to the courthouse in Queens that day that we went to the courthouse. I, I kid you guys not old dirty bastard was there getting married for like the sixth time or something like that right lola oh old dirty yeah. bastard yeah you know the rapper old dirty mm -hmm. bastard uh, no ODB? No, but yeah you never heard of odb yeah no yeah. not really oh uh walter different yeah. circles different circles yeah exactly so old dirty bastard is like hip-hop royalty walter oh, okay okay so um so anyway that's how we got married man and and if you ever see the picture of the day that we got married i'm like bony like about to die <laughs> and lola looks like pregnant like she's about to have triplets <laughs> you know? and there was no romance whatsoever <laughs> so how long did you guys Lord. got married huh how long did you date before you got married three years three years we together for about a year and we knew each other for three years yeah so and that was like uh, we got married. What at this point, like uh, 19, almost nineteen years ago. Okay. So that was a long time ago. We didn't do the big wedding or well, anything like that. Getting married. Uh, yeah. Well, how long you been married? Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> to this wife, you mean? Oh, no. oh Peggy came That's back. How in. long have been married? <laughs> I got married in 1990. Just put it that way. <laughs> Why did you? Oh, you had to ask Peggy. Okay. What, what, what was that? I said 27 years. 27 years. Yes. Wow. Awesome. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That's to be so, congratulated, man. That's that's, yeah. that's 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 a big deal. Hey, Peggy. Hey, Kevin. <laughs> did you see? Yes, I heard about the proposal. Did yeah. you see when his wife was on? Yes, I did. Yeah. So I bet you, I bet fire, you get a romantic uh, proposal like that from Walter, Peggy. Uh. Yeah, the romantic proposal was I was home from work sick because my daughter, Alexis, our, our daughter, Alexis, was sick at the time. He decides to come home and drags me into the bedroom. I had just taken her temperature. I still had a thermometer in my hand, sits me on the bed. Where, did you, where did you take this temperature? No, <laughs> not <laughs> mine. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. This temperature. She was sick, so uh, it was like... Uh -huh. And then he decides to propose in the bedroom. And I was like, you don't even get on your knee. Well, I didn't actually say that. But. Yeah, but I, 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 I didn't. <laughs> oh, and you're talking about me, Walter. I had pro I had proper jewelry with me, too. He so. did have oh, the jewelry oh, oh, with okay. him. It's not like he didn't have anything with him. So. Yeah. yeah. So all you guys, except for me, did the whole, like, proposal <laughs> thing with the diamond ring. Lola has never gotten that diamond ring from me. What? <laughs> Wait, you still oh, have a wedding ring? Uh, she has a wedding ring. Yeah, we both have diamond wedding rings. I first of all don't wear. If you notice, I don't wear rings. See, so, there's so, some. There's some. There's some. Oh, there you go. Awesome. Bling, bling. That's really nice. How many birds is yeah. that? 
That's what you yeah, call how it. Many <laughs> yeah, how many Barrett's? How many Barrett's is that? <laughs> how many Barrett's went into the, you know, how many Barrett's could have been bought if not for this ring? Um, Man, it, it's, it's been upgraded a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, it's been it's overhauled head. one time for sure. Yeah. Yes. Bigger okay. diamond in the whole nine yards, so. Okay, but that's the proposal ring though, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Lola has a, a, a wedding band, but not a proposal ring. Well, no, that's the, the proposal ring is the one in the middle, and then band is what goes around it. It's oh. you gotta have to see. Okay, hold on. Let's lock it here again. Let's see that. Lola, come and look at something that you will never see. <laughs> hit him, Lola. Hit him. <laughs> that's very nice. That's very cool. Congratulations to that. I bet you, Lola. I bet you, Lola doesn't even have a wedding ring. Do you have a wedding ring on? Oh, excuse me. Well, that goes to show you what I know. So there you go. That's all Lola gets right there. Boom. Diamond, a diamond band. That's it. That's all she gets. Okay. Okay, Lola. Get going. No. Hey, Lola. <laughs> Kevin said, what's up to you? Okay. I'm leaving too. All right. See, yeah. Right. She says her story. Yeah. Okay. No, we can't. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm trying to make everyone forget about Kevin's all romantic oh, ass story. Uh, we're not forgetting that story anytime soon. No, the, listen. Just, um, what? What? The reason the I International I, League of Men are going to come for Kevin's ass. I, hey man, I don't. I don't. I don't see why. I'm just saying. You know, I look. My whole thing is this. Right now, here's the funny part too. She had been single. It was. It was funny. We were almost both single. The exact amount of time almost we were a week apart from when we uh broke up with our other with our last people so she had been single. we had both been single five years when we met and when we we like narrowed down the date i was like you know what you know sometimes it don't it doesn't take you know i, I don't want to you know go through this whole oh let's let's you know date for 10 years and then one day we'll break up and then if, if we're meant to be we'll come back together mm -hmm. look man i was trying to have kids while i could still move easy i'm like Lady, you got a job. How's your credit? Uh, you, you, you're smart. You're beautiful. You're funny. And then she's she's Christian. So I'm like, yeah, no, I no, don't. You know, I don't need. You're to incredibly take fortunate, man. You did the right thing. You did the right thing. I oh, applaud damn. you. I'm getting lots of hate right no, now. Right. You know, you got. You know, you gotta. But it's okay. Now it don't matter how you got it. Now what you do with it when you got it. Now how you yeah. keep your romance alive. Right. Chris B says Lola's prettier than me. Put her back on. Yeah. <laughs> um, Thing is, I think Hank knows that. <laughs> yeah. Boss Hog says you got to do better, Hanks. <laughs> uh, Screaming Skull says eight and a half years married, and I still haven't got my wife's wedding band of proposal <laughs> ring welded together yet. She keeps bugging me about it. So, um, and the Archangel says been married fourteen years and have the wife's name tattooed on ring finger okay that's a cool one yeah, i've seen yeah. that yeah yeah i like I, that i was just i just got all of a sudden decided i wasn't gonna let her i just got ex i was anxious so i just did it you know that's why yeah <laughs> I, <laughs> don't get in the way yeah <laughs> see all of this this is what you have to look well i think babyface you did a whole romantic thing didn't you oh hell yeah we we went and had steaks at burn steakhouse oh that's cool <laughs> i we had we 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 did that the first time when we adopted Alexis, I think. Yeah, everybody went to Burns to eat when we when yeah. I adopted Alexis. Uh, Burns is yeah. like the is like the hoity toity uh, steak oh, thing in uh, Tampa. Yeah. That's world known, man. Presidents oh, really? go to eat. I I've sat never, at a table I've never that heard presidents of it. have sat at. If you want a steak, <laughs> have you have you ever heard of steak and shake? Oh yeah, <laughs> okay. you, know, you can't get a steak this steak at Burns though. So I mean, oh, Burns, is, <laughs> Burns is the real deal. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. No, I don't go to those big expensive uh, steakhouses, man. It was where you can spend like that's that's actually was, gun money that you people spend up in those places. That's what I did. I didn't have no gun money then. So after after tip, it was two hundred bucks for the two of us. Damn. Okay. Well, we, we went all out. We had like lobster mac and cheese. I had like three whiskeys. I wasn't holding back. I was I was going all. Oh out. yeah, you gotta go for it, man. <laughs> yeah, I remember when we went to the um the Indiana, yeah. the Indiana um NRA annual meeting. My brother actually came up there, and he's a steakhouse aficionado. His whole his whole purpose in life is to go to steakhouses, right? So he so we were walking around in the NRA, and we saw this real a real nice set of steel targets and everything. And my brother was like, "You know what? I'm gonna get this for you to help you out on the channel." And I think it was like 300 bucks. And I was like, "Okay, that's awesome. I'll go for that." But he didn't get it. 
I should have made him close the deal right then and there. Cause then he found, uh, what is it like Morton steakhouse or something mm -hmm. when we, okay, this place was so expensive. We, I actually met Costa at that thing at that show, Yeah, you know, Costa Ludus or whatever. And so when we went there, there were all these black SUVs outside. I thought the president or something was up in there <laughs> and it was Costa. It was Costa and his crew in the steakhouse and everything. And we sat like right next to him at a table. So it was me, Lola, my brother, and my niece, right? And when I saw this menu, I told my brother, I was like, dude, can we leave? <laughs> I'm not even trying to, to, to do this. My brother was like, no, no, I got you. I'm going to do all of this. Let me tell you something, man. When we left this place, the bill was like six or 700 bucks. <laughs> and I was so mad. I was so mad because after that, my brother was like, yeah, remember that steal that I was going to get for you? <laughs> he was like, that's over. <laughs> yeah. So, but he, but he was, he was totally happy to enjoy that steak, man. And I was like, you know, we could have just gone to steak and shake. <laughs> you know, on you know, the way, on the way back to the hotel, we passed the steak and shake. You got <laughs> You got to go to if you get a chance, you got to go to Burns one time because it's kind of a dining oh. experience. Oh, know? it's amazing. Okay, the whole and they'll make it if you want them. If, if your kid wants a grilled cheese sandwich, they'll make him a grilled cheese sandwich. Yep, yeah. if okay. you want steak to stick, three inches oh. thick, they'll make oh. it. I'll tell you what, let's do this. Let's do this, guys. When we hit like a hundred thousand subscribers, let's go. It'll be the it'll be on Walter. I agree. I'll you can be a hundred thousand subscribers. I'll buy it in Burns three times, four times. No, I'm talking about the Hank Strange situation. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, you. Oh, you thought like uh, Safety Harbor Firearms hits a hundred thousand? Yeah. Oh, well, you know. Good, good luck. <laughs> yeah, that's. What's, <laughs> I don't think that's happening in our lifetime. Well, I don't know if I'm gonna get there. To be honest with you. Yeah. So. Well. No. So listen, when we hit when we hit a hundred thousand, we'll go there. How about that? So, okay. so do we have any any gun news? Are we moving into some gun news? Yeah, let's do some. Gun we got We still before the end of the show, we still got to hit gun news and gun porn. So we got a lot. Yeah, of uh, well, uh, Babyface, I got your gun porn right here, baby. Oh, talking about us. I got this is three fifty seven action. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh, what? Look what, at that what, smoothness. Like oh my god. Y'all got total Yeah. Look at that. You have what? Yeah, I said, yeah. what, what do you, what do you prefer, a blued or a stainless gun? I, I, I like think which, one, which one do you think? Which one do you guys? You guys tell us which one you think looks better. Oh my god! I like this. Is, this is so smooth. Kevin, kill well, smooth right there. I'm sorry, man. I like, I like stainless in general. Blue yeah. Blue. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, baby face. We'll let you show off. Um. So, oh no, I was gonna, I was gonna get over to some gun news. Okay, hit us up with some news, man. What's going on? So today in the news, this is on Fox News. Uh, the Dems ordered a, uh, what's it, the GAO, I believe is what they're called. Yeah. Uh, Congress ordered the GAO to do a search into if it was easy to buy guns online oh. illegally. Out of the 72 attempts that they made, zero were successful. <laughs> um, baby face, um, I don't know how to tell you about this. We talked about this already. Yeah. Did you guys already talk about this? Uh-huh. Last oh, week. Man, this is on the news today. But I can I comment on that? Uh, because I'm from the future, baby. This is from five, uh, 55 minutes ago on Fox. Yeah, but I'm from the future. Yeah. We talked about this on Friday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can I talk about that? Go, Go for it. it. Absolutely. They, they really could not find a gun to buy? <laughs> no, no, no. It's not that. If you read the article, they try to do it online through arms list. And the oh, people okay, on okay. arms list, weren't, oh, they yeah. try to trick right. the people. They well, try to not trick idiots. Them. Yeah. And the people on there, when they found out that these people were like, because, you know, they, they basically they were trying to trap people. So if those people yes. went for that, they'll probably be in jail right now. Yes. You know, and most and and zero people went for the crap that they were trying to pull off. That's good. That's good. You know, I didn't realize they so, tried on arms list. Yeah. The, yeah. They were trying to do baby face. You know, like I said, 56 sellers refused to sell a complete transaction yeah. once revealed that either the shipping address was across state lines or that we were prohibited by law from owning firearms. Yeah, I mean, let me, let me, because because Kevin, we, when we talked about this, Kevin was very sarcastic about it. But let's <laughs> go down this again. Who the hell on this panel right now is going to sell a gun to someone that you know should not have that gun? Yeah, no. exactly. Do, I mean, no. are you going to do it, baby face? No, hell no. Okay. I check, I check okay. driver's license and concealed carry permit before I, I sell anything face Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, Kevin. I, um, <laughs> Do we need to ask you? <laughs> what if is watching? I don't look. <laughs> uh, no, I don't. You know what? The, the sad thing is, 
I'm so anal about it. I have um, friends that will that will call up and be like, "Hey man," and it's not necessarily illegal. I guess there's a gray area. Like, hey man, can you uh you know like use one of your discounts from somewhere and like get me a gun and then like sell me the gun for what you paid for it? And I'm like, no. And now these oh, are people that own. They can legally own them. They got guns. I'm like, oh, they just want it. They just want to purchase them. That's straw purchase. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to buy your own gun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, legally, that's a straw purchase. So. Yeah. Now, Walter, you and I, you and I, we're FFLs. Yeah. Um, and that doesn't mean that we can't sell things to people like our personal things. Yeah, you can sell your personal stuff. But yeah. we're still not doing it. I, I don't know about you, but I'm not doing it. Well, it yeah. all depends. Yeah. I mean, if, if, this, if there's people that I know that the situation, if you know people, you know what their thing is, that's different. Yeah. You know, but I'm not going to do, you're not going to sell something online like that. Oh, not online. No, yeah, no, that's no, what no, I'm no, saying. No. Absolutely. No, no. If I sell yeah. something that's personal on my own that I've had for a long time, it's yeah. usually somebody I know. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's, if you're somebody you know, or it's, it's a face to face. I never, I never ship a gun. I just don't like doing yeah, it. I mean, I have bought guns that way and, and I haven't really sold any online, but if I did, it went through an FFL. So yeah. Yeah. If they, yeah. If I know as an know. FFL, I can buy it from say like you baby face and you can mail it to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and Florida, you don't have to, Florida, technically, you don't have to go to an FFL. Because mm -hmm. you, you don't have to in Missouri either. In the yeah. state. You're in the state. So mm -hmm. um, Missouri, you don't have to either. You can just do a bill of sale and be done. Yeah. yeah. But in general, in general, as gun guys, we're all aware of different things that are going on and we're not out there trying to. I mean, this is what they found out. We don't even need to argue about it. Right. right you know, right. they tried this and it didn't work. So, yeah. Well, you know, maybe they were expecting something different, I guess. I guess. Yeah. Now um, the gray market or what? What a, you know the dark web or whatever. That's a, a whole dark different web, deal. Yeah. You know. Uh, is that is that never no. um, mind. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, hey, hey, you, hey, no. I don't even know what you're gonna say. Go ahead. No, no, no. no I got something. I'll hey Kevin. Um, so I'm on that place that we used to go to where they have firearms and it's a blog. Um, <laughs> <there. Sorry. laughs> <laughs> hey, it, pretty, it came out pretty good, didn't it? That was, that was, pretty, that was good. There's a new HK, uh, some new HK product photos. Maybe you've been personally invited to see this stuff, but I never have. So, and for the HK two two thirty three, HK four thirty three, four sixteen, and four seventeen. Yeah. Mm -mm. I, I just know. I know. I got an appointment to to go over a shot, but no, I didn't. I didn't get any releases about any. Uh, well, this, is on, this is on that blog that, that oh, has fire. Okay. Really you have to get an appointment to see I HK. Mean, yeah, you know, you live and breathe HK. Are you saying that when they manufacture, they should have sent this to you six months ago? Right? <laughs> You're right. You know what? And I'm going to talk about that. <laughs> we should have a conversation. But no, I didn't. I just had to like. Well, I mean, you guys know how it is. And you got to like book time to go places. Like they didn't tell me. I oh yeah, 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 yeah. I need an appointment to make sure I can get over there. So I, I booked it myself. I got a couple appointments, believe it or not. Good uh, for you. Yeah, yeah. I'm going over to see the guys over at Leapers uh, and U UGT. Yeah, UTG. Yeah. UTG. Yeah, yeah. They got some interesting stuff, actually. <laughs> those are those are like the the low end companies. You know what? Before, before I forget, and sorry, before I forget, I have to I have to give a big shout out. And you know, it hurts me to do this, but I, I have to. Uh oh. So I woke up this morning, and I get this notification from Patreon, and it says that Hank Strange. Oh boy. Is now a Patreon. Um, no other and you know, he was, he was, he against my own better judgment, I, I know it was, I'm pretty sure Lola typed it in. And you know, it was, yes, um, <laughs> yes she did. Up, I was like, like, What are you doing, woman? The first name I see in the morning, like this etched into my eyes now, is Hank Strange, like right in my face while you're still trying to get. <laughs> I hope it was like a real <laughs> grotesque picture. <laughs> and then, but no, that's that's big, that's a big deal, Hank. I want to thank you. For um for your uh your subscription and I believe also John Gillian is from here and I want to thank him as well both of you guys uh I appreciate you and thank you so much. Oh no, you're welcome, man. Listen, we you know, you deserve it. So I I hope some other people out there or everyone out there actually goes and uh, supports NLC firearms training on Patreon. Yep, that'll you know, be it's well awesome. deserving. All right, now, I think you will not get the discounts. What what are you talking about? I want all the benefits. No, no. I'm not, I'm, no. Remember, I gotta actually, I gotta actually sign this check. You don't get that for a nickel. Come on. <laughs> Why are you over here? All right. Back yeah, to that. Ahead. Back yeah, to that ahead. thing that called you know, has firearms and is a blog. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> this was probably on oh, national boy. news too. This uh, where they found a stash of military explosives in northern Arizona. Oh, I did not. Oh, no, I didn't see that. Oh, I didn't see that. You guys need to go check it out every once in a while. Come on. I don't oh, have anything against they found, um, I, went through their, I went through the blog. I didn't see that. No. Um, they found a bunch of C4 and some Claymore mines and some debt cord buried. They think it's really? been buried for 20 years. <laughs> That's because the Marines <laughs> that were out there were like, fuck this. I don't yeah, want to haul this back to base. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I guarantee that's what happened. What would you do if you found a Claymore? I would Blow it up. <laughs> if, you, if you didn't know, if nobody knew you had it and nobody knew. I would not take it home. Well, I wouldn't take it home, but would you go someplace and, and let it go? If you're out in the middle of the desert already, I would blow it up. Hell yeah! I put some cardboard or something up there, out there. Yeah, and just, yeah but yeah, um, is there was there an activator or? Yeah, there was a clacker there. Yeah, for the <laughs> claymore. So this, Wait, um, kind of you know, you can laugh, but somebody buried this stuff. They knew what they were taking when they took it. So, uh, yeah, so a, I actually, funny enough, I have a, a clacker right there. Actually. I have a marine friend who is. Okay, hold uh, on. Show uh, that again, Walter. Hmm. Okay. There you go. Yeah, hmm. uh, I have, a, I have a marine friend who's an EOD tech, um, yeah. and he, when he was visiting last time, he was telling us a story that they were doing some training out in the desert uh, here in the U.S. and um, they blew, basically blew up a truck so they could. I think the bomb team was supposed to come in and investigate to see how it happened. It was like training thing, right? So the the EOD guys go out, blow the truck up, and then we're just kind of scavenging the area, looking around, waiting for the other team to come out. They found uh, they found a, a, a cache of M1 Garand ammo, like belted and everything, in in uh, in block clips buried in the desert. Hmm. And it was oh, probably wow. he was yeah he was like okay. it's probably the same thing. Some some Marines back in 1940 were yeah. like hell no I don't want to haul this back to base. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You gotta wait in line and like turn it back in. And they're like so just buried it. <laughs> yeah, but out in the desert, nine times out of ten it's gonna be fine, man. Yeah, yeah, it probably would have been. I think they blew it up too. <laughs> yeah, probably so. Did you guys see um, um, Sig's new gun? Um, the P365? Yeah, I'm is that interested. what you speak of? I was going to mention that. That's yeah, good. I'm interested in it. Kevin must be on the uh, that blog that has firearms on it. Uh, no, well, it's also on the truth about guns. Oh, I mean, okay. come on. I, uh, no, I actually let's give credit where credit is due. What's well, oh, on there, too? To people who don't try to suppress news. I think I actually saw it. On, matter of fact, I saw it on Instagram today. Uh, Noir shared it, and that's how oh. I saw it. First one I saw was Oh, oh, I'm daddy. so surprised. I mean, who else are you? I don't think you're following anyone else on Instagram uh, other than I, the one. I, 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 look, I, I follow Big Daddy Guns. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? I mean, yeah. how, how is uh Noir is Noir on Patreon? Is he supporting you on Patreon? I was just curious. <laughs> like no, private, is that, man. no, no I'm just I'm just I'm just messing <laughs> but, with you. You know what? I'm gonna <laughs> cut this out and send that to him and be like, you know what? Uh, <laughs> game up, bro. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> Let's not put any more. Let's oh, say, Colin he, Noir already has enough haters right now. You guys, you guys want some exclusive news? What's up? You want it right now? What's that? It, it actually came out on my Instagram live the other night. It, it was told to me on my Instagram live. So I thought that was kind of cool. Um, so you guys should watch that at NLC Firearms Training. But um, TYR Defense Industries are the guys that them and a, a company called MLS Customs out of California and TYR Defense is out of Georgia. They're the ones that collaborated, like the, the guys that are actually stippling and cutting the gun. Mm -hmm. um, so they're the engineers behind it. And he announced on my uh, stream that they are going to be bringing the war and their tour of the Advocate and all their other guns to St. Louis. Oh, so cool. I will be bringing those peoples here. And we will have a tour. Now I don't know. They just did it in Georgia, and they had twenty. Uh, they had ten Aston Martins and ten Lamborghinis. I got a couple of Chevys, so I don't really know what we're gonna do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can get some donks up in there. I was get some donks. Say, I was a... <laughs> but yeah, so that was. We cool. could donk it out, man. A donk beats a Aston Martin, Lamborghini, whatever. I don't know. Day. I don't we don't know. Do donks up we we kind of yeah, you guys do donks down there. You know, we got something different. That's <laughs> <laughs> heavy Chevys, baby. Yeah. Oh, you see no, this no. where uh, Ruger laid off 50 employees across several locations. It says. Oh, that's sad news. So let's get back. Let's. That's that's terrible. I never yeah. like to hear folks in the yeah. in the firearms industry. Oh, let me ask that you matter, question. any industry, especially when it's the porn industry, I don't like to hear people getting laid off. Well, they just replace them. Getting laid on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. But um, <laughs> here's the thing, though. Let's get back to the P365. What do we really think about this? What I mean, obviously, we don't actually have one. But what do you guys think? It's think it's single stack. I think it's uh, ten plus one capacity. Okay. Yep, ten plus um, one. I believe it's the same. Uh, is it the oh, same modular system? 
It's small, like a forty-three twenty. Is it the it's same the frame as the forty-three? Same size. That's the interesting thing to me. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the way they get around that is uh, instead of using, uh, I mean, because polymer takes up a certain amount of of space. I mean, a, a plastic mag like this, the plastic has to take up more right, room than more, a steel yeah, mag. Yeah. Um, so they went to steel, and then I, I have a feeling they widened it just enough where it uh, it's not a true double stack. It's not a true single stack and not a true double stack. Because doubles, I mean, are like right next to each other. Yeah, yeah. I have a feeling it's like a mix of the two where you get them where they're kind of on top yeah. of each other. But it yeah. adds another couple rounds at the same well, size as a... Nothing wrong with a steel magazine. That's no, that's what I'm saying. I think I think to get a 10 plus 1 in a, in a, a mag this size is pretty cool. Yeah. So what I'm trying to find out, I'm trying to look through here and see if there's any info on this. Is this the same modular system? Does it have that, that I, rail that's actually the... I'm, I'm going to doubt. I doubt yeah. it. I doubt it. Yeah, I you doubt it. That, 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 that would add that. size to it probably. Yeah, that okay, would, that would make it thicker. Yeah. Okay. You got to yeah. give, give them... You gotta, you, it's simple, but you gotta, you kind of got to love what this gun is because it, it dives into that area of the, the 43, the shield, the XDS, right? Mm -hmm. But... Giving you more ammo, right? Because what is because I think the XDS is get one seven plus one and one eight plus one. The mm -hmm. the forty three is what a uh, eight plus one. Six. Plus um, one. six. I six. think it's six. six. I mean, if you do the base yeah. plate, you get seven plus one. Okay, so you if you get the base plate, so yeah. you gotta love them for capacity, and it's it's a you know it's it's a, it's a decent looking gun. Yeah. Uh, if it feels good in the hand, I mean, the trigger guard is still pretty large on it, so you can still get guys with decent sized hands shooting it. Um. I think it's a win. I think it's smart because that the the nine thirty eight and the two thirty eight. I mean, the, to me, they were extremely expensive for what they were. Yeah, too uh, expensive. You know, and it, it just didn't do it for me. The three twenty, I actually like that gun and some other six stuff. But this, I think, this is going to get them in that that shield XDS. You know, forty three. Yeah. It kind of sounds like what um like what Rob Pincus is developing, right? I the, actually the, the lines of that, the lines of that frame are very similar to his. So, yeah. uh, I as much as I like my Glock 43, I've always hated the hump on the back of it, on the back strap. Mm -hmm. uh, I would totally consider something like this. If I got a chance to shoot one and, and liked it enough, I would totally consider carrying I'll it. get the touch of the shot. That's the main thing, yeah. I need to see – I will need to see how it feels before I can just say yeah. – What are we it's, guesstimating the price is going to be? Yeah, the, the, That's um, the thing. The price is like close, it's like close to 600 bucks. It's wow. 599 uh, uh, MSRB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it could be, um, it, it street price is probably going to be a little bit less, but still, yeah. you can get a forty three for what four hundred bucks, four fifty, less than that, four twenty, I think. Yeah. The only thing with this is you're getting night sights as well, which is you know that's pretty nice, but yeah, it's, but, it's hard to tell. It's going to be a hard one. It's going to be a hard one. If it works, I mean, if the gun performs, if it yeah. shoots well and all that stuff, it's going to be it's going to be a hard one not to recommend from now. On. I yeah, I'm I. The more I look at it, the more I like it. I, I I definitely want to give it a shot. Give it, take it, and do some shooting with it and see how it yeah, feels. Yeah, it'll be interesting to take a look at that. I I hope that um, you know, for Rob's sake and the uh, ability and the PD10 and all that kind of stuff. I don't have any stake in the game, but I know this is what they were trying to develop. Hopefully they're coming out with that that's sooner, a, than, that's a, I don't, sooner than later. I mean, I know Sig tough, obviously has a reputation market. already. I don't yeah. want to. I don't want to to rain on his parade, but his everything about his gun was awesome until he started saying that the trigger pull was almost more like a double action, single action. I don't want that. I want a striker fired where every trigger pull is exactly the same. I don't want the first trigger pull to be heavier and longer, and then the rest of them to be like follow ups. Yeah, um, that was my only complaint. The other stuff that he had looked great. It's just the trigger didn't make sense to me. Okay. Um, I, for for his for his thing, I think uh, what Car is doing, okay. uh, Car Arms is doing, makes more sense to me. They have um, if you've ever shot one of the cars like the CM9 or the PM9 or any of those, they have a longer, slightly heavier trigger pull. It feels more like a revolver's trigger pull, but they're consistent throughout. I like that. I like consistency in my trigger pulls when it comes to like a carry gun. Okay. Um, and then speaking speaking of Rob Pincus, um, did you guys get to see what? Because you know when when he was here on the show, someone asked me what happened with Springfield Armory and all that, and I didn't really realize that he had that deep of a relationship with them. Yeah. So we did put up the snippet of that video. That's live right oh. now. Um, on YouTube, and it's you know actually getting a lot of views and a lot of hate. 
when I when he was yeah. when you were talking to him, all I could think about because he kind of thought he kind of said it wasn't the Hillary plan on some of this stuff and this that and the other, and all I could think was is that damn saint. The saint. <laughs> the saint. If that ain't a Hillary plan. I don't know what the yeah. Is. That is so. You know why would a company like Springfield Armory come out with an AR-15 that's exactly the same of three quarters of the ones out there if they weren't thinking they were going to sell a jillion of them? Yeah, I, I don't know. Now, what I think people were the most upset about, like I've been looking at the video, I see it's got lots of, it's gotten views and it's gotten lots of comments and folks are still mad um, on our side. I guess this is like the diehard gun guys because to be honest with you, in the stores, from what I see, most people just don't really care or you know, if they're okay. into Springfield Army, they're still buying them. I, yeah. I've had, we've had the XD in the past, but I'm not buying anything from them or um, Rock River, but. One. So one, they're Croatian guns. They're not American made, which eh, it's either here nor there, I guess. But speaking of which, I'd rather I'd rather own a like a Smith. I can buy a Smith that's made in the U.S. I'd rather own that. Um, oh, uh, what is that? An XD? You're an XD? Oh, guy? Uh, XDM five and a quarter competition. Oh, okay. So you're five and a quarter. Though I'm not gonna lie, five and a quarter guns are awesome. Yeah. So <laughs> you're not you're not mad at Springfield Armory, is that what well, you're saying? I, you know, well, one, I already owned this gun well before that debacle. Um, and I like I like Springfield products. I carry Springfields for probably about uh, five to seven years. The the XD and the XDM. Um, I think that because in your full disclosure, I am very close with people that are very close over there. Uh, one guy that I work with all every day, all the time. And when I heard the behind the scenes, you know, it was a, an admittance of we should have had more oversight on that guy. You know, a, a total ownership of that. Like mm -hmm. We should have had more over, oversight on them. We screwed up on that, uh, but we didn't set out to do it intentionally. And I always fall to it. And I know it's, it's, it's you know, from the way we see it, it's, it's easy to get upset. It's easy to get mad. But I always try to tell people this. If, you're, if a buddy of yours, a friend, like a friend of yours, screws up, right? He totally screws up. And he tells you, hey, I made this mistake. But, dude, I didn't, I didn't know it was going to lead to that outcome. I then don't expect you to then hop on social media and start bad mouthing your friend. Now, if your buddy comes to you and says, yes, damn, I got caught and I was really trying to do this, then yeah, okay. <laughs> Especially for the sake of freedom, you let them have it. But <laughs> they, if they screw up and you know I'm like half a step away from the owner and they're like, we screwed up here. True enough, yes, that is ours. We did that. We Yes, we own that. Um, but then over here, Kevin, we we didn't we didn't have oversight on that guy. He went out and did this, and there's nothing we can do but deal with the pain. Besides firing him, there's nothing we can do besides deal with the hate. Um, so if I'm I'm not gonna like look anybody in the face, believe what they're saying, and then turn around and dog them out. I just no. think they did make a mistake. They should never do that again. You don't just hand over the reins to freedom to somebody and you're not watching. No. Yeah. That's now, uh, I carry my revolver in single action, says, um, did it Smith & Wesson piss off the gun community before? I think that happened. I think there's several companies out there that have done it. Um, you know what? When you look, when you, if you really look into this, I don't, most people, including me, don't buy the fact that they didn't know what was going on. Well, that's, I mean, that's this, this office was inside of their building. This was an this was a this was a lobbying arm that they set up. It wasn't like some outside people and you hired them and every now and then they came to visit you, you know, I, and you I didn't know what was going that, on with them. I can't imagine that the higher ups over there had no clue what was going on. I, I just can't believe that. Yeah, if that is that's that is a. Terrible business. I just no, but it's not. I don't. I think everything. If you look at the actual evidence that, like you know, I'm not knocking Rob. I mean, he he works with them. He's known them for a long time. I'm not going to knock people for what they do or what they believe in. But and I think the reality is here that most of us can see it looking from the outside. The evidence says that they they were completely 100 percent in in charge of these people. You know, they were officers in the company. The, this company existed inside of their building. All kinds of all kinds of stuff was going on there. So they they had to know what was going on. Um, and even if they didn't know what was going on, I think ultimately, which I don't believe that they didn't know, I'm pretty sure they knew, when they got caught out there, they didn't deal with it in a straightforward way. And even in the end, they haven't dealt with it in a straightforward way. It doesn't matter. Those of us who are mad about it, we're mad about it. We'll never support them. We'll never buy stuff from them and all that. But ultimately, 
they didn't really feel, I don't think they felt the financial sting. I think maybe maybe there's a couple of people who are not going to buy their stuff out there, but for the most part, people still buying their stuff. Well, you know, I, I think that A, you do have to own it, right? There, there is, I'm never going to argue about somebody walking away and not owning something. So if people are, are concerned with the way they addressed it, I mean, you can't argue that. Um, because I, I don't remember exactly, but we had to wait, was it a, a month or a couple of months for the, the actual response to come out or whatever it was? That, that's ridiculous. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that was that was, you know, that could have been done a little bit better. Um, I So I don't I don't I, I don't get upset at people for being upset. I'm just not. Mm -hmm. right? I'm out of yeah. I feel away. Right. Yeah. You're more than welcome to feel how you feel. Um, I would I would also add too that um, they they definitely screwed up. I think they could have responded a lot sooner. Uh, to let everybody not know how they felt. Um, I do at the same time feel that some people, not not everybody, but some people aren't even aren't even true missionaries to what they say they're going to do. Like I've I've had a ton of people say they wouldn't buy it unless it was a used one. Like so you you're, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you're you're still I mean which uh -huh. way are you? You know what I mean? Like for me, I'm not going to go out. You know, I'm not going to go out and destroy my Springfield. I spend good money on these guns. And yeah. Well, also, what's the argument that we always make? Right? We always say that guns don't kill people. People kill people. Right. So I think I'm and I'm not saying that you should go out there and buy. Spring I'm not, I'm not going to do it. I'm not buying anything from them. I'm not going to support them. But ultimately, the guns themselves didn't do this thing. But how do we? How do you get a company to to realize that they did something wrong, and you know feel the pain of that, and and maybe correct their ways, and avoid where in the future they just try the same thing all over again? Gotta because if they, the yeah, if they really don't suffer, they're um they're, you know, if they don't suffer, they're going to do it again. Yep. However, you know, I think the point that people are making with that is if something's used, what does it have to do with them? Well, I, I think, you know, I mean, they've already sold the thing. They've already like if you buy a used gun and uh, an XD, if you buy a used XD, the person who you bought it from doesn't take some of that money and send it to Springfield. I get that. But and I'm not saying that you should not sell your guns or you should not buy a used Springfield. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that at the same time. Like, what are you standing on, though? Because if you don't want to own the product or support, because every time you go shoot it and somebody takes a picture of it, guess what you're doing? You still promote it. So. Yeah. It's like, you know, just which way are you going to stand? Now, for me, hey, I'm all about people doing what they want to do. Certain things I get really, really hot about. Certain things I sit and I let simmer. And, you know, I don't I don't yell about everything with that. I was very hurt. Like, I will say I was, like, stunned when I, you know, like everybody else. Because it came out while we were at NRA. Yeah, that's like, when it happened. Yeah. Floor, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and, I had, and I had just, like, literally, I found out 15 minutes after I came back doing a video with XDE. <laughs> right. And the video I was already editing and I still put it out because, you know, I was doing it with my buddy. That, that's the guy that I'm friends with. We did. So. I did it because he's one of their comp shooters. And uh, we did the video. And, and when it came out, I'm like, man, I hope this is not true. I hope this is not true. And I was lucky enough to be able to talk to him directly, you know, and, he, you know, he, he stood his ground about how he felt. And he, he didn't believe the family did it maliciously. He does believe it was an oversight, but nothing malicious. And to me, I'm just like, all right. You know, sometimes you, you do get caught because it's real easy. Like you can take Ruger, Smith and West and Springfield. And sometimes you get put in awkward positions. It's very easy to get mad at people when you don't know them. But when they can when they tell you to your face, I screwed up. I don't know how else to fix it. It's hard to. And if you believe them. Right. It's, it's kind of hard to be like, yeah, you know, well, we're just going to make this all go away. You know, you're sorry. You Next time do better. I believe the gun industry has a right to be upset. They do. I believe that we all have a right to be concerned about how it even. I don't got think the industry is upset. I think the community. Not the well, end. the community, true. true. Yeah. I always mm -hmm. some things like that. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, you have a right to be upset. So I'm not ever going to tell somebody, hey, man, you shouldn't be mad. I've never said that. Mm -hmm. I'm just like the, the perception I'm getting and from the way I'm talking to them, I do agree a mistake was made. A grave mistake was made. And I was even like, why are we still waiting on a response to come out? This has been two months now. Like, what's up? Um, and I think when it came out, because, and I think Rob even covered this, because it was so polished and so well produced when it actually did come out, I don't think it had authentic, it, it, wasn't, it didn't feel authentic. It felt, mm -hmm. it felt like a marketing team wrote it, right? So I think that there were definitely some balls dropped there. But I mean, hell, if you're mad and you don't want to own them, I mean, I, I don't, I'm not going to ever get mad at you. I'm also not going to get mad at the guy that it shows them to the range and shoots it. I mean, like the, they, they make some good, like the M1A is an awesome gun. I'm not going to get mad at you if you have a SOCOM. Like I'm yeah. just not, 
Yeah. You know, so I don't know, to each his own. Um, yeah, but absolutely. I'm not going to buy their stuff. I'm not going to review their stuff. But at the same time, we're talking about it. And I think, you know, it comes back to the thing. Look, Rob talked to us about it, right? And he had his opinion. And I think people are, are, are allowed to have, that's what the whole conversation was about. They're allowed to have their opinions. He had his, I had mine. We should listen. We don't have to say that we agree with it, but we should listen to what they have to say. And ultimately, um, this is just, you know, this is just one of those things that's going to take a lot of time to work out. And I don't think, yeah, I don't, I don't think they took real heavy losses over it though. There, uh, there are still people that won't buy Ruger because of how Bill Ruger treated the community back way back when he was a, a, yeah, flood. a he was, yeah, he hated, yeah. <laughs> he hated <laughs> anything that was going towards ARs. Or, no, no high capacity were, magazines for you, right, but we'll sell, we'll yeah. sell them to the police all day long. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, there are people so that still what, buy Ruger. So what do you think about this kind of stuff, Walter? You're a manufacturer. How do you look at this? I mean, well, you know, you know, you're know, not like one of those big dogs, so you're not in a position to like wheel and deal in terms of politics and all that. Well, but. yeah, I mean, if if it was my company and, and first thing I wouldn't – everything like that would go through somebody approving it. Sorry. You mean in terms – like when you say someone, you mean you. You would approve well, everything, Well, somebody right? or somebody in, in a in – a, you, you know, you're, you're, you write a manual – and you're going to print it. You always have somebody proofread it first. Make sure that it yeah. sounds maybe, right. Maybe. Hopefully. We hope so, so. So why would you do political stuff and not have somebody say, hey. Yeah. I don't buy their story. I don't think most of us do not buy their story. I think that if you are an XD guy, like Kevin said, he's an XD guy. He probably used this. Uh, Kevin was in law, uh, law enforcement or something, right, Kevin? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so he probably used it. He has an affinity. He has a connection with the gun itself, which there's nothing wrong with. I think people in that category are going to, you know, I hate to say this, man. But I'm not trying to, like, say that you guys' opinions is not valid. But if you're looking at this rationally, there's no way in hell these people didn't know what was going on. They created, they created this lobbying arm. It was their friend. He worked in the building. They, they would, were members so, yeah. of the. They were members of the company. There's no way that they were doing stuff that they didn't know about. Yeah. But then my question will. But my question. My question is still this: If they did do it, now let's just, let's just say everything was set up where they they were going to do it, right? Like they were totally behind it. And I, I've always been curious about this. What was the real game? The game, I think the game was to kill off the rest of the competition. It's a big company, employs a lot of people. And basically, if you if you make it difficult for other people to be in the same business as you, you up your profits. OK, so to that and I'm not arguing that I just always like, man, because it was just in Illinois. So I'm like, oh, man, how's that really going to work for them? Um, now, here's something else. And I'm not trying to say this is an escape goat for Springfield, but I do have a general question about getting mad now at gun industry especially gun retailers you guys remember when uh barack uh had his first term mm -hmm. you uh, could not walk into i wasn't aware of the fact that you were like on a first name basis but okay <laughs> <laughs> I'm just <gonna> <laughs> all right but he had his first term and it was a whole you know it was actually he hadn't even got it yet it's the whole you know the, the, the scare there's always the gun scare yeah um okay you, you mean before he got sworn in or while yeah, he was already sworn in before he got sworn in you mm -hmm. could even gun stores and i mean every last one of them i went to called dealt with every last one of them started reserving the ars for law enforcement only they wouldn't even sell to the civilians don't don't i wouldn't patronize that store yeah i mean th I this am. is why we talk about cheaper than dirt man um well when, you, i won't buy from them yeah the Wait a minute, now you're saying, and they wouldn't sell to the public like literally so a, a prime example right there uh there's this uh, gun store here called me uh not it's Mid America Arms, so not to be confused mm -hmm. in any way, because mm -hmm. I don't want to make me face mad. Um, mm -hmm. It's not anyway. Um, but uh, good store, you know. I have nothing against those guys, uh, but I went in there because I was like, eh, I'm in the market to buy. I wanted to buy a new rifle. It had nothing to do with scare. I just wanted a new gun. I was like, I should have bought this months ago, but it'd be cheaper. But oh, whatever. I want to buy a new gun today. So I went in, and they had a. Uh, it was just a Smith and Wesson uh, M&P um, uh, uh, 15. It was it was nice, decked out. It was one of the MOE uh, editions yeah. when they first yeah. came out. That's and a I was five or six hundred dollar gun, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it wasn't an expensive gun. I think it then it was like seven and a quarter. They had the thing, like uh, they moved it, for example, with several of ARs. This one stood out to me. They moved it, put a big tag on it, and then I started noticing all the other tags. 
The price jumped up to well over a thousand dollars. It was like <laughs> thirteen fifty or something. And then they had Leo only. Like you couldn't even ask the salesman to see the gun, and he would ask you for your badge and your credentials. It was nope. the same gun that you were selling last week. <laughs> now oh. this week you won't sell it. So I, there were there were always people doing that kind of crap, and we don't stay mad at them. And I'm oh, not well, sure. but what was it? Why was it? Why, why would you make it LE only? I don't understand. That. I think maybe that was a ploy just to keep the regular person from buying it. Unless yeah, you went in there and said, like, no, no, but no here's why. Here's why. Because there's some dude who always comes in and goes, oh, that's law enforcement only. How about if I gave you 1400 Okay. Yeah. And then they will sell it to them. I saw this with the Caltech PMR. I went into, you know, in this time, the, the, the PMR, the pistol, the 22 Magnum pistol, very difficult to get right and these things were selling like 600 over that um and the price is supposed to be 300 or in the 300 category right and i went into a store that actually had they, they had a list okay they had a list for anyone who wanted to get this gun there was a dude on the list i went into the store and they had one and they were like oh you know there's a customer who is on the list and that's his gun and i was like oh okay you know so they were holding it for the guy and i thought that was cool Another guy came in there that wasn't the guy, and they, he asked them that, and they told him the same thing. And then he was like, "Hey, I'll pay you five hundred. I'll pay you six hundred. And they were like, "Okay." They sold it to him. <laughs> yeah, it's that. You know, that's the kind of thing. And and when I see that, I'm never buying anything from that. Is that store is that a again. store that we no longer patronize? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I I understand. <laughs> you know, people do people do um, things that same like store. That. that same store was selling uh, P mags for like. The highest I saw them go for like, was like fifty-five a piece. <laughs> and they had a barrel of them. They had a barrel inside the store. That this was post Sandy Hook, two thousand thirteen. Yeah. Um, but they had a they had a box of P mags, and they were listed at like fifty a piece. Yeah. I was like, oh, and, and that's why I've never bought from them. But there's different there's different classes of uh, gun guys. <laughs> this is one of the things that I wanted to talk about in the news. I don't know how much time that we have for it, but um, I saw it here in the news. They were talking about um, we should have a conversation about who. The kind of guys that, you know, who is it? Let me see. Where is it? It's in the uh, Truth About Guns, and it's how to save the firearms industry. That's I the saw uh, that headline. Post. I didn't read through it. And if you look at it, they were talking about who actually buys guns. And basically what it was saying is that there are people in America that have a gun or maybe two guns, but most of the guns that are out there belong to, like, a smaller percentage of us that have, like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know how many I have. And so do you market specifically to us or should you market to the other people that don't have any guns at all, but they probably want guns, you know, and be, and they want these guns, but there's things that's happening that are scaring them and making them think that they can't do this or this is like a thing just for special people. and You got to be all super tactical and you have to think about it in that way. And I think that they should absolutely, if we're their customers, they should think about us. But I think if we want to keep moving this forward and get our get our rights back that we've lost and our freedoms that we should have, we do have to think about those folks out there who want to have guns. And some of those people are liberals. They are Democrats and all that kind of stuff. We've got to think about them and, and get them to start to understand what's happening. And I don't I don't think that that means that we're going to change everyone. But I think it's going to make people realize that there's a freedom that they have that they're potentially giving away. You want to know the, how the marketing it. they're gonna they're gonna push towards the uh, newbie is not gonna work on me. It, it does Absolutely. nothing. Yeah, it I don't does think nothing it for me. It's like that saint thing. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> I mean, it's like I, I the yeah. saint the saint those kind of things those AR ads like that. You know, we got the newest thing, greatest. It's the same old gun with a different handguard on it. It's like okay, woo boy. Yeah. No, <laughs> I don't think that works. Yeah, that doesn't work on us. And I don't yeah, think I mean, that what they do is going to work. Like we want the different stuff. We want something that's on the next level. Right, but right, there's right. the but there's the person out there that just wants a rifle. They want a handgun. Right. You know, right, right. and there's yeah. lots of things that make them that intimidate them maybe about this. Like when they go well, into stores. You know, when you go when you go to that store that no like you might come in there and you want a handgun, you want a Glock or something. And they they want to sell you a shotgun, no matter what you say. Well, that's 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 a problem in the store. That, they, they need to be taught how to address their customers. You know, I mean, yeah, that's, that's another reason why I say if the if the gun industry wants to survive, first of all, and I said this, uh, that's why I was late today. I was I was doing an interview, uh, and I had to get through traffic. And I I said I said this exact same thing to them. You you really need to start paying attention to the markets you want and how they're spending money in other arenas. Yeah, how you can tap into that. So, for example, you take 
we make music, right? Um, music, fashion, entertainment stuff, right? If you imagine if you could, if the gun industry could get a quarter of what's being spent over there from the community that's aren't spending with them now, a quarter of that, right? You wouldn't have a slump. You would have a steady stream of, of people, and they don't need you to spend fifty grand on print ads in three months. They nobody. Who who actually sits up really in Reason Magazine is like I am so. Yeah, excited. but do we have a slump? I yeah. mean, last year was the second biggest year. So the only bigger right year was during. The, yeah, the only bigger year was during Obama. Oh, excuse well, me, Barack, yeah, right Barack. after uh, Sandy Hook was Kevin. nutty. I'm Sandy just yeah. I don't know if Kevin got even got that one. You know, no, I'm not. <laughs> you know how how when you can, but you know we always say you know it'll it'll do this, and then as soon as some scare policy or some tragedy or an election comes, it does this real quick. And, you know, then it teeters back off. I just think that if it will be uh, a serious injection of uh, resources if, to be honest with you, and I'm not trying to say all the guys in the industry are stupid, it's very intelligent people uh, in the gun industry, including the marketing side and things like that, right? Uh, I mean, okay. So, uh, but they are investing, they, they are doing silly investments into their marketing. You know, yeah. if you were, you know, okay, think about it like this. If it's not something new and brand new, like you were just saying, Hank, if it's not something like off the wall, Exciting. Answer this question honestly. Babyface, if I showed a Glock 19 just at a different angle with some shells laying around it, am I going to excite a guy like you to go buy it? Not even close. Not even close, right? Hey, you're not going to get your attention, right? No. It's not going to get Walt's attention, right? But if you, what if you took the, I don't know, I'm throwing a number out, the 70 grand you spent in six months trying to push that same gun on people in a print ad that you're not convincing to buy it because they probably already buy your stuff anyway. Mm -hmm. Why don't you invest that in other areas? And in Cold other man. avenues to get newer people. Who, who the hell is even reading? Ma like I would like to know from you guys. Um, I I have a I, I think my guess is going to be there's only really one person here who's reading magazines. But also I mean, I'd like to hear the audience to tell me, me who actually that. reads a gun magazine. It ain't me. Okay, Kevin. Unless I got read it. I, re I read them when I'm featured in them. <laughs> hey, Walter, do you, no, do wait, you? this this shows up because it's free? Okay, <laughs> exactly. Um, but do, okay, so seriously, this call my this call this call my I don't, I don't, and you do get them. I mean, that's why I was thinking that you would be the only one to say. Network. There's some actually. I mean, there's some good stuff in some of these, but sometimes mm -hmm. I just don't take the time to do it. I mean, that's yeah. the Kitty and Kentucky Firearms Network. We blame them. Okay, the they're, they're, they're the ones over there. So wait, I mean, so okay, are they subscribed to magazines? Are they actually paying the magazines? Yeah, do you guys you do know. you guys actually subscribe to them or do you just like Yeah. Or do you go into like my brother who spends money on guns? He's a, he's a my brother's a bigger gun guy than I am, okay? And he's one of the reasons why I'm doing this. That's true. But we're we're both gun guys. He goes to Barnes and Noble <laughs> And flips through, and guess what? He's looking at the articles and things like that, but he doesn't look at the advertising. Um, he doesn't get into all that stuff. He takes pictures of what he likes, and then he goes and looks it up on YouTube. He does not buy this. He doesn't own it, and he doesn't spend a lot of time, um, you know, on who's advertising in there. But there's still a lot of money going into advertising on magazines. Well, but, but but and also the number of magazines have, have has been has, is a lot smaller now too. So. There's a lot less gun magazines out there, so because the market is changing. Start reaching. We have to, and I know this is probably going to 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 tick some 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 gun people off. Mm -hmm. But you are going to have to adapt to marketing to people that is going to attract them. So you're going to have to make the guns look hip and cool. You're going to have to make them look like, oh my God, I have to own it. This is a part mm -hmm. of pop culture. You're going to have to. It is. It, I, you, you, yeah, you the other way around. And now you got to like with the Draco. It's like with the Draco, right? right. I mean, I don't, I don't do it like ever Draco. made. And now it's no, but I'm just saying. I mean, why do like the the, the dumbest gun that is super popular? Yeah, why was I? I was in the gun store the other day, and they were that's these because kids those and they were people about watch the, Draco. the people watch the rappers. The, yeah, that's yeah. the only reason. Yeah, it's so like it is like look, I, and I, I'll be straightforward and honest. So with a lot of what I do, a bunch of people that I work with have. Probably I've never even picked up a gun before, right? So uh, when I'm doing a community events and stuff like that. But even when I'm in the store, and I'm pretty sure you guys can attest, people will walk in and be like, yeah, I just want a Glock. And when I was like, huh. which one? They're like, I don't know. I just know Glock. Like, every gun is a Glock. Exactly. A double barrel shotgun is a Glock. Like, everything mm -hmm. is a Glock, right? Because they hear it so much. So it's a Glock. I want a Glock because Glock's It's, it's like everything used to be an Uzi. 
Exactly. Yeah, like, I, I want an Uzi, you know, you know, whether it's a high point or whatever, it's an Uzi. You know? Uzi. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we got to make them, we got to make them hip, cool, fun. We gotta- if we, if we really knew what we were doing, I'm going to tell you guys this right now. <laughs> if we really knew what we were doing, we would just all become rappers. Because if we were rappers, we wouldn't be getting our videos demonetized on YouTube. I'm already a rapper. Like, I'm on ba- Babyface. Babyface P on YouTube. Yeah. I'm right there. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm not even kidding. I'm not even kidding, guys. Seriously, yesterday, um, actually Saturday, Babyface and I, we did a video um, with that 410 bore shotgun lever action from Henry Rifle. That yeah. video is up. It's not, um, we haven't opened it up yet except to the people on Patreon. YouTube already went in there. Not like they didn't put it up for review. They certified it in a review that they are not going to make it. Uh, it's not suitable for all advertisers. A lever action rifle. Really? Yeah. But guess what? If I was a rapper in a music video, like slicing people's heads off and, well, and shooting people up and all that, I wouldn't get demonetized. Or maybe- and then everyone would go in. If I was like shooting this X95 or something, everyone would be in the gun store the next day trying to buy an X95. What? Yeah. Well, you know what? And to your point, I'm a. Um, <laughs> so, and I'm not knocking rappers, man. I I did hip hop music. I grew up in I grew up in the middle of all that. Look, look but it's it's it's, it's crazy. Crazy. Look at this mess. Just watch. Oh, yeah, that, that is a oh, bunch of shit. Yeah, I mean, this like, is uh, yeah, this is. Oh, you ain't I mean, seen nothing yet. Watch, watch. I don't even. I don't really. Don't don't show it. Watch I mean, so. <laughs> this watch, is so watch. stupid and so watch. horrible. The the demanification oh the demanification God. of the demanification yeah. of Americans is is it's sickening and one more time. It's, one more time. No, no, I don't want to see it, dude. Now, I, I now. seriously don't want to see it. Why isn't there why isn't there an outcry from the folks that really do that dress? A, that's like not a that. dude. Is, is that a dude? It is a dude in a dress. Yeah, it's a dude. It's a dude. dude. It's a dude. But look what he it's does. Not a, I don't know. Probably not a dude. Like so, he is. He, so. And I'm not saying that's what we need to do. Please, guys, don't get it confused. <laughs> no, that's horrible, man. <laughs> dude, no, that's a man. No, that's Walter <laughs> in a wedding dress. Well, obviously, that's a rapper. That's a male male rapper you know, that's rap dressing in a wedding dress and doing all kinds of craziness to get views. You know, right. so that's what we've boiled everything what's, down to. On, what's his, what is it? His name is the jerk. <laughs> off. <laughs> jerk off is what his father should have done. Yeah. <laughs> so, but you know, that, let me tell that, you something. You know, to your point, I put that video up and I'm not knocking people that, that go on my Instagram and stuff like that. Right. You can put up a great educational video about safety or whatever the case may be it might do you know i don't know a, a decent amount of views or whatever i put that joker up that that thing shot up to thousands of views like in no time. yeah but that's the thing like you know and and i think that for me i think you have to like decide what you want to do now obviously if we were out there trying to get views like uh what's the name of this guy uh paul what was it Paul Logan, Logan or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, that you know, guy. when you're dealing with these guys who are just out there trying to get views, they do stuff like that. That's what that rapper was trying to do. He's mm-hmm. just all about getting the views. I'm going to do whatever's the most controversial because people are going to be on there looking at it. That's not really what we do. Like we're here trying to have a real conversation. Not everyone watches this. It's not going to go viral and get a, a 4 billion views or anything like that. And we're going to give people real information and, you know, honest, straightforward stuff and all that. And it's not, even when we make snippets and we do something that people like that snippet gets uh, a few views, it's never going to do anything like that. And here we are, you know, uh, I'm, we're making a conscious decision every day to never do that craziness. <laughs> uh, and what I tell people is you are responsible for your own honor. And it's ultimately not worth it at the end of the day to go through all of that just to get the views. Right, but I ain't putting on no wedding dress. I can tell you that right now. Yeah, you're also not going to give a blowy to a guy. I, I ain't giving a blowy. I ain't no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's the thing. But that's what that guy did, man. And it's kind of like, wow, you know, um, you know, <laughs> the real, the real old school rappers that I grew up with. I'm, I'm glad that some of them aren't even here to see that kind of crap. Yeah, you ain't one. Man. Me, me too. And you yeah. know what? On, a, on another, to to you, even to your original point, I'm gonna say something even harsher. You know what? If I was if the the if I was the marketing guy, seriously, unless it was something like mind blowing or something new or something that had a lot of equity into it, I wouldn't even I wouldn't market to us at all. Nobody on this. Well, that's what that's what that article was saying. That's what I was trying to tell you. That our, that article was saying. You, you know, know how, how about how about marketing to? And guess what though? Honestly, for me, my plan for a long time, I've never tried to 
first of all, I wasn't in the military. I wasn't in law enforcement. I'm not a super tactical ninja. I never pretend to. People are always telling me, you don't know shit. Yeah. Oh. I feel like I feel like the guy in that Eddie Murphy movie, I think it was uh, Coming to America. Did you guys see this movie, Eddie yeah. Murphy? Okay, yeah. and there were these guys that were in the barbershop. There was this Jewish guy, and he was telling this joke about something. And um, I think he was talking about the, you know, he was talking about his soup or something like that. And and um, and there was no spoon. And the waiter was like asking, you know, what's going on? And there was no spoon. And he was like, aha, aha. <laughs> you know, that's that's the thing I think that's um, to me that's happening here, right? Yeah. Uh, he lost me some. You know, so no, what I'm trying to say to you is that the ha aha moment for uh, for me is that all this time I've been trying to talk to the people who are not super tactical ninjas, just regular dudes, people who are interested in guns, they're smoke. interested in the world. Yeah, they want to get into this world. You know, they want to understand these things. You know, never trying to like talk above people and all that kind of stuff never trying to pretend that i know everything or that i don't um kevin was talking about this today i was uh working on a snippet from our show on friday and kevin was saying yeah you know that person who pretends that they don't mess up and they get everything perfect and they don't make mistakes why are we why are we even following those people and i agree with that sentiment <laughs> it's, it's not real you you know I think, and you know, and that's one reason why I never come out trying to talk about a resume because you know what happens when you try to throw out your resume, people come with every reason to try to tear it down. It's, oh, that's nothing. You know what I mean? So I don't even, I don't even care about that kind of stuff. And you know, I learned that uh, more, one of the more recent lessons was actually with Pincus. Pincus uh, did something a month or two ago, or whatever. It was some training video, and he put it out, and a guy jumped in and started arguing with Rob. And Rob will get you every now and then. He'll, he'll, mm -hmm. you know, he'll, he'll lash back. And the guy started challenging uh, Pincus' uh, credentials, like his resume. Like, you weren't you weren't a real cop. Oh, you didn't do this. Oh, you didn't take this training. And I'm like, it's, it's Rob Pincus, dude. Like, you know what I mean? Like, but it goes to show, like, you can be a SEAL and be like, well, you're not God. And then when I was talking to a SEAL one day, yeah, but this guy thought he was doing something. And then this Delta Force dude, like, an hour later was like, yeah, those SEALs just really want to be Delta. He doesn't know anything. I'm like, you know what? I, I, look, man. And what do we to know? Not, like, uh, are you on... Um, omniscient do you know everything there's no way you can know everything a lot of the the real special operator guys that um i've spoken to they know what they need to know to accomplish the mission right, right, right. there's a lot of other stuff that they don't know they don't care about it's not important you know and you know what here's a, here's a question for the audience i'll be curious about this now with uh, this disclaimer is this i understand that you want to trust that what you are going to learn the teacher can teach Totally get that. Mm -hmm. But here's a question for you. And I, I'm interested. Yeah. OK, someone someone Jordan Poole had it got what I was trying to say, by the way. He was like, taste the soup. He was trying to tell the waiter, right? Taste the soup. And the mm -hmm. waiter was like, how can I taste the soup? There's no spoon. There's no spoon. And then the guy was like, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. that's the problem. There's no spoon. That's where I lost Walter, but yeah, Jordan okay. helps yeah. sort that out. And the point that I'm making is like, why are we, you know, we're to, to like, we're, you know, we get, there's lots of places to get all super tactical and get into things and they miss the basics, you know, and that's what we need to deal with. For example, the person who goes, like you see, a look, I'm a, I don't care if it's the Draco. If you see the Draco yeah. and you're like, wow, I want that gun and you go to the store and they have it and they sell it to you and you pass the background check and you have this gun and you get into guns and you do more guns, to me, that's what I want. Mm -hmm. the, the store that tries to tell you, no, you, you shouldn't buy this gun, you know, or they don't have it and they tell you, you don't even want that. What you need is a shotgun and they try to tell you what to do. They are missing the point. You know, if, if what brings you to this in the beginning is fun, what brought me into this is since I was a kid, I was in love with these things, bullpups. I got ARs. I got all the practical shit, no, it's bad, right? you know, but this is what I was into. I was into bullpups and that's what brought me into it. This is actually what I spend most of my money on and that's what I collect and what I try to have. And if that's what brings you in, that's no one, you know, that's what you should focus on. Yeah. I'm, I, you know, I agree. I totally agree. And I, I think that another thing, um, Caitlin, please, please, thank you. I was getting in trouble with mama. I'll be trying to protect my sweetheart. Um, <laughs> 
I see. See, you deal with her totally. Di- you need to go where her mom's stay. Her mom was like, "Get out of here, girl. Get out of here. <laughs> Hit the road." <laughs> now I'm not telling you to do that. To the, to the I, know, I know how to stay in my lane. I know how to stay in my lane. Because you, you will not be getting any hugs and kisses for a couple of weeks. I know how to stay out of trouble. When you, when you look at, you know, what, the, and I get it, and I always tell people, I look at things, right? So when you look at the resurgence of our soldiers from uh, Desert Storm in the 90s all the way up to now, we had a lot of guys cycle back home. They had a skill set. They wanted to share it. It was a market for it. Everything made sense and lined up. Boom, there you go. However, um, I think now what people are missing is nothing against those guys that can run guns like that. Those are the guys I go train with. Those are the guys that, that I run and, and, and test curriculums against and all that stuff. I get it. However, the market now that we should that we are trying to reach is not a dude that is trying to do helicopter missions. This is a guy that wants to be able to get from the grocery store and home and maybe learn some little bit of advanced stuff in between. Right. So we need to stop marketing to them like this is what I, I, I say this. Most instructors are so busy trying to sell them to you. Instead of trying to just tell you, I have this skill set and I can show you some things. They are so busy trying to get the Hollywood on them or you can come do Hollywood training with them. And it's, it's, it becomes that people now not to not the, the instructors, because, I mean, if you're selling classes like water, then, yeah, go for it. But the consumer, I'm curious, what do you guys really want to see? I and mean, that's why I have my disclaimer. Yes, you want to take training for somebody, you know, can train you in that thing. Mm-hmm. But do you need a seal to teach you? Uh, first level handgun class. I'm just curious. I'm not trying to be funny. Do you need, do you think that only uh, Beret, Seals, Delta, X SWAT, do you think those are the only guys in the world that can actually teach you how to run a rifle? Like, do you think those are the only guys to teach you how to fight? And I am so curious about that. Like, what is the draw and why is that for the common man such a, uh, I have to go take, I have to learn how to get from Target back home from a Navy SEAL. Why is that? I don't I'm know. curious. No. I mean, I, I think mean, that's I think a good question. You should also ask companies why the only people that can sell their products are Navy SEALs. Okay, I'm you hearing like an echo somewhere. There's an echo somewhere. I would, I would say this. You know what? You're absolutely right. Not to challenge the, the, the marketing folks and all that. But honestly, now it's about relating to the audience that it is. Like at that time, you know, you look 10 years ago. Yeah, that's what you had to do. You had to be a dude. If you weren't a dude, you weren't moving nothing, right? A Hickok got lucky. But if you weren't a dude, you weren't moving nothing. Now, what do you look at it with the market that we're all trying to get at? I think the guys have kind of faded away from the tactical dude. I barely even put on my play carrier because I don't want to scare people. I don't want them to be intimidated. But I don't I don't think. Well, okay, I I'm not trying to knock you, but I don't think that Hickok got lucky. I think that he for years was just him. Also, he has the benefit, which is not luck, of being a teacher and all that kind of stuff and just being a plain spoken dude. I don't, I don't mean look like Hickok didn't deserve it. That's in, not in terms of getting the audience, but I think it's because he put in all this work and he, um, you know, he had the same range where people had this regularity. And, and this is still what pe- why people come to him. And he has this huge library. And he did exactly what we're talking about that people should do. Hickok just shows you the gun. He shoots it. And he's like, hey. You know, this is what it is. If you like, I that, like it, I don't like it. Yeah, I don't yeah. Know. and that, and and we could, and I, and I see people, a lot of people knocking him for that. I'm not saying that you are, because I know you're not. Oh, I absolutely. see people. I've seen people knocking him for that because he's not a Navy SEAL, and I'm like, that's funny because that that people people respond to that. People respond to the fact that he doesn't get all you know Tactical. all Navy SEAL about it. You know, I talk to to companies all the time. And then inevitably it happened to me the other day and Lola was cracking up in the background because I was talking to a company and the guy was telling me about how they have this super Navy SEAL dude. And I respect that a guy went out there and fought for, for my country, you know, for our country and put his life on the line and, and, and you know, was a That's professional. A yeah, it's awesome. I respect it. I would never disrespect it. But I think that, you know, that people are making mistakes because when you do that and when you do that, too often what happens is the the normal person out there who might be interested in your thing looks at it and thinks he can't operate that because it takes a super navy seal dude i don't and you know uh um robert just uh commented uh firearm right there's a different i think and i know it was a typo because mm-hmm. he's up there's a difference i think he's saying from um theory-based knowledge to situational obtained knowledge now to that i agree so if you were oh, yeah. saying that I am trying to learn how to run. I'm a SWAT team, and I'm trying to learn how to do team dynamics and entry with my team members. Yes, I don't need Joe the plumber that does part-time concealed carry classes. Mm-hmm. No, 
I need a guy like Costa. I need or uh, uh, dudes that we never heard of that are great instructors, right? I need those yeah. guys to come in and teach this because that is it. What I'm saying is, you are if a, you are and look, I don't brag about it, but I've done things. So I don't, I don't, I, I get. I've been in bad situations. I've had to go into darkness and get. I get it. But what I'm trying to say is, and I've never been overseas. So that's not my story. But if you, are, I'm talking to the heart of the person that's trying to just learn these things. I just picked up to your point. I just walked in the store, picked up this thing, and I want to learn how to use it. It doesn't take a dude that was banging with ISIS to teach you how to do a 50 yard zero. I'm sorry, it doesn't. Yeah. No, you know and, at the, and yes, and at the same time, I'm not knocking those guys either because some uh, there's a lot of those guys that I've met that have done all that kind of stuff. They're actual like pipe hitters and all that kind of stuff. But when they teach you, they don't bring that to how they teach you anything. Do you understand what I'm saying? They don't hit you with that super holier than thou and what I'm doing is, you know, too much for you. Yeah, they've done these things. And I think ultimately they realize they, they get the reality of this. And 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 for even the, the guys who've done this and this is their life, I think they realize that this is a thing that has to sink into you. This is a thing that has to become you and it takes time and training and all that kind of stuff. And those guys who are special operators, we spent a lot of money to get those guys to be like that and we've taught them repetition. And so for anyone, you could do it if you just repeat it. If you keep if you keep practicing these things, if you keep getting into the world, if you invest in it, you know, and because of technology, because of the internet and all that kind of stuff, you don't have to spend the kind of money that, well, nobody has to spend the kind of money the government does, but you can do it. And I appreciate the people who even though they were special operators and out there doing that stuff, can teach it to you in that way. But yeah, I agree with you. They don't have to be special operators to do it. Yeah, and I so. think those guys that have a true skill set deserve to be compensated. They deserve to have successful businesses. And like I said, I try to those dudes all the time and I have nothing against them. Like I have openly said that uh, my recent training adventures will not be complete until I'm in a Haley class. That has to happen. Right. It's 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 also to the point to where the industry is trying to like you're you're like what is that company? What is the the thing? If you want to be do you want to be quiet as the footstep of the Navy SEAL? What is that? The urban carry thing? Whatever that thing is, like it's a concealed carry holster. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you saying it needs to be quiet as the footsteps of a Navy SEAL? Like that that just look it just it just it because me. they feel someone responds to that and listen we're gonna i mean we're already running over time um there's a couple of things i want to hit baby face first of all you put out a video you want to tell us about i want to we were supposed to get back to this and we did it and lola has been trying to remind me for some time you don't have to talk about it you was, no I, please tell it. us everybody about, just go watch it. no tell us about the video tell us where is your video what's going on uh it's on my channel it's baby face baby dash face piece something like that and Google what is this video <laughs> something like that something like that um it, I I <laughs> I combined a uh, the uh, we have two two point Smith and Wesson two point here. Um, I combined the upper of a compact carry two point Smith and Wesson two point with the grip of the five inch full size two point So work? basically, it was a Smith and Wesson version of the nineteen X. Did it work? Yeah, yeah, it works just fine. Yeah, it worked. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, yeah unless you and unless you want to go by the Glock nineteen X. <laughs> that was the point of the video. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We've got Patrick in here somewhere. I don't know if he's ever tried that combination. He probably has those guns. So they so, work just I mean, fine. I'm talking and about then, Patrick from the firearm rack. So it works fine. Side. And you have a video with that, right? What? You have a video. It's on. Yeah, it's on my channel. Yeah. Um, in the flip side, you can put the, uh, the five inch slide on the compact frame. And then you have a tiny little grip with a super long sight radius. And it's pretty cool. Yeah, so that's what you would prefer. Uh, I prefer a well-rounded pistol. I don't want anything <laughs> that's that's crazy. You don't, want I, too I big like... a you don't want too big a butt. You got to right. have. I want a little bit of both. You got to have a little bit of both. Yeah, right, you got to have a real well-rounded pack. Oh, okay. A little bit of shape. You need some. Walter, shape. I thought you were liking the the Glock nineteen X. <laughs> Actually, you know that I'm going to talk about that real quick. Everybody's ah, that's not this and that. That's not that. That gun is designed to be put in a holster and carried in a holster. It's not a concealed carry gun. They they don't matter how big the grip is. <laughs> it's not. It doesn't matter. It's made to put in a holster. But Period. you like the idea of having a bigger grip. Well, you well. But it, but not necessarily grip, having a bigger grip, slide bigger because grip, if okay, grip, bigger grip can, people equals more ammunition, my friend. Too. So so to to firearm to Patrick R. 
I can go and get a slide mill and put a red dot on any gun. I don't. The Glock 19X, I don't think, comes with the slide mill. Oh, here we go on that gun again. Oh, yeah. Well, anyways, Does it come my with whole the point was. Am I retarded here? My whole point was the military is not concerned about concealed. Uh, okay, so Patrick, Firearm Rack says this. Oh, God. Uh, Babyface. If Babyface would get with the times and embrace the red dot, <laughs> he would change his tune. <laughs> Oh, see, see, I love red dots on pistols. I, sh I shoot them all the time. But, but you know what? You still got a standard 19X to get it milled by some dude. Uh, where, like, why would I do that? Why would I buy a 19X when I could buy a 4 or MOA 19 or MOA 17? MOA MOS, 17 seems MOS, like the best MOS. combination. MOS, MOS 17 seems like the best combination. It's you got a longer sight radius plus a red dot. <laughs> Butthole carry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what. Okay, what I, what comment are you reading? Uh, how you say that? Miss uh, music, uh, music. Music lover. lover? Yeah, <laughs> I'm learning butthole care. <laughs> okay, all right. So yeah, that's how I feel about it. Doesn't matter. All right. So please check out Babyface's video. Please uh, subscribe to him while you're over there. He is putting up videos. I think we yeah, can just shot that little video. things off and on. I, I do yeah. like the color of the 19X, though. I do like that color scheme. It's very pretty. That's, yeah, I wish they would have released uh, some of the other ones, like a, a 19 or a 17 of that. Yeah, I like it as well, but I see lots of people saying it looks like baby poop. <laughs> oh, yeah. see, flat dark earth is my favorite color. Of baby. Yeah, I, I don't think it looks that bad. So They should but, do an OD green one. That would yeah, go my good. favorite color is this rod. Chair. Like this, you mean? Uh, OD green. No, OD green. Like, That's what you got. Yeah, OD, no, OD green. The pistol Odie Odie That's what you gotta get. <laughs> Odie Green, that's the color. Um, see, look at what happened to me. I got a flat dark earth suppressor. Look at how horrible that looks. If that yeah, thing, this thing is I, actually yeah. used. You know what? That's, it looks, it looks well. I do have a quick question. So this is I'm always the one to admit when I don't have experience in the area. So mm -hmm. I've shot cans true enough, but I've never uh coded one. Like is it even a real point in Saracota and can you're truly gonna run? No, I don't. Um, I I don't. It worry. depends on how good the job is, but it's really not necessary because it's gonna get messed up. Anyway. A good a good yeah. seed, a good bake on Cerakote shouldn't mm -hmm. cook off because yeah. it's made well, to be baked. It might change colors in the really hot spots, but yeah. it'll change colors a yeah. little bit. But yeah, I mean uh, this oh. this one is not all the way here. Let me um this oh, yeah. by the way <laughs> is the SOCOM. This is the Surefire SOCOM Mini SOCOM. Good little special, can. What is SOCOM? Special Operators Communication. I don't know what the hell SOCOM. <laughs> Oh, communicate. What the? Fuck? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I like this. This is done well. This I like the color here. This special operations done. command. Oh, special op. See, I don't know. I don't even care. <laughs> um, this is done well. This is all. And by the way, when I first got this, my friend Yakaz, who actually sold me this, you guys remember on the channel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When this heated up, he wrote something in here. <laughs> is still there? Well, you, could do, you could do like my son uh, did, and he I don't see it anymore. Heat up the stand, the Gemtech stand. Oh, actually, I do see it a little bit. I see it a little bit. Oh, he wrote Yak Yaz in there, but I don't <laughs> know if you guys can see it. He autographed it. He autographed yeah. it. And so I can, can see it in there a little bit, but yeah. You can heat the can up and put it on a nylon uh, nylon gun case and kind of leave like a nylon imprint in the side of your I've gun. done that to my suppressors. Yeah, but it works the same burnt, still. I've also soldered uh, holes in, in benches at the, the range. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it makes a nice little burnt divot in the. <laughs> yeah. So oh, uh, um, that was a good out. question, though, Kevin. Um, I think it depends yeah. on the treatment and uh, who did it and all that kind of stuff. So I, I got that beautiful gun getting done right now. Hank's favorite gun in the world. You know, that BP-9. <laughs> I don't have it because it's at the shop and it's going to get things done to it. You know, that BP-9, Hank, that you love so much. And I'm going to get a can no. for it. And I was really wondering, like, man. No, I, don't, I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah, and I was like, man, do I want to? And the guy's like, you know. how about can't. this? How about this right here? How about oh, that? Go. Oh, okay. Yeah, Actually, that's titanium coating. It's not you know, gold. this is that uh, Faxon barrel right up in here. People call it gold, but it's actually a, a titanium yeah, coating. Is that what it is? Titanium. That's like they use, it's what that's, they use on. It's what they put on machine tools. Yeah, that's yeah. beautiful. With uh, my Trigicon. check out my Trigicon. Yeah, pretty that's as a nice little nice little combo. My only problem yeah. with all these fancy the best sights, gun in the world, right here, baby. My only problem with Lock all these 19. fancy sights are is if that fancy sight gets dropped and broken, you're out of luck. Yeah. Yeah, yep. well, your iron, iron sights work perfectly for me. Hold on, yeah. Hank, let me see that gun again. Let me see it. Let me see it again. Oh, okay. okay oh, hold on. Here we go. Here let me see this thing. Up. Uh, Hank, turn that gun around. Uh huh. No, the other way. Turn it around. Turn it around. Keep going. Keep going. He wants to see, see the, the back, back of the gun. Hank. I want to see the uh, back of the gun. Uh, what do you right, want? Uh, now lock it on you. All it's right. It's locked sir. on me. 
I'm gonna need you to put some suppressor high sights on that damn thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you got a red dot, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah okay, it's this is a work in progress. I have I probably have about three or four Glock 19s, believe it or not. So believe- I'm not in a rush. So this one is just a work in, the pro- in you're progress. Gonna add, you're gonna add that 19 X, Hank? Uh, no, not really. Mm-hmm. I'm not in a rush to do it. I'm not. I don't really have anything against it, you know. Um, but it's not terribly interesting to me. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. I think um, I saw in the truth about guns that the people voted the the uh, the best new gun of last year. They voted the Hudson Nine. I I saw a couple of hate videos on it when people were complaining about certain things, and I we haven't shot one yet, but mm. from feeling one, I I want one. I really want one. <laughs> okay, from the mm. truth about guns, their front page. Three best carry guns for hiking. I don't see no guns. Mm-hmm. I see guns, but they're not they're not firearms. <laughs> oh my god. There's some let's, on there. let's go let's go hiking. Hey. <laughs> hey. Now that's now Hank, you got a, we got a special guest in the chat. Um I don't think that's a real person, but really? at this it, no. All right, well, hold on. No me, way. No yeah. way. I doubt that's the real person in there. Uh, I wish I could look. So, oh, no, 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 you're right. You're right. Never yeah. mind. Don't do it. Don't do it. Someone, no. Someone's someone's probably trolling us. Yeah, so what else? Cool. But it's for really reaction. Me. Keep keep yeah. it down. Keep it down. Keep it down. No reaction. No reaction. Yeah. Absolutely not. No, <laughs> we're Coolio smooth. Just we're Coolio smooth. Just, right. Right. Bring, bring them up. Like the bring them up hey man, you know, funny story, real quick before we throw, go. Uh, by the way, throw your pythons in the air if you got them. I mean, I'm, here, throw, I'm throwing up. Python, I'm throwing baby. up two right now, but you guys <laughs> can't see both of them. There, there's that python. <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going to make my gun worse than all you guys. Right? You see this? <laughs> you want to see my Draco uh, too? See that? Get... Oh. See this? I like making people nervous. There you go. Oh hey, we want to do that too. Oh wait, safety zone. Oh wait. Is the magazine loaded, Walter? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Walter, you're kind of missing the point. You kind of I know. Missing. I know what he's doing. I know what he's doing. <laughs> you're kind of missing the point here. I, I don't keep. Is that your? Is that your Draco? No, no I know. A, this is this, a, this is your MPAP. MPAP, yeah, yeah. I do have the Draco. You know, so I have that too. Yeah. yeah. Did the you Draco. get it because of the rappers? You got it for no. The rapper, the rapper. You know you did. Rap that crap. Crap. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Every time we talk about rappers, and I'm I'm gonna wrap this up. Speaking of rappers, but every time we talk about rappers, you don't know what we're talking about. Have you ever heard of Nicki Minaj? Oh God. Oh Minaj. Oh, yeah. God. Don't um, lie. Don't lie. The female. You're talking about a female, correct? Yes. yes. I, I'm very familiar with those Minajes. Yeah. Big the female yes. specimen in the rap game. Yeah. yeah. Big booties. Walter's heard of. Uh, <laughs> well, it, it's been out uh, there in the air. You know, it's not like it's covered up or something. Yeah. Nicki Minaj is you know, not doing anything that, for me. That you know about. So there you go. Yeah. That's how you market stuff to a gun guy. Walter well, is a diet in the wool gun guy. Hello. You get, you get Nicki Minaj. <laughs> what sells? Let me remind you. What sells? Sex. Not Nicki Minaj. Sex every day. Sex. Sex every day. Oh. That's what we're selling up here on the Move well. My Freedom podcast. This Rap- is a lot of sexy right here. Put, put that thing in the cleavage, and what are you seeing? You know, and what are you looking at? You know, I mean, you know, come oh. on. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? What was that? You guys hear that? <laughs> Marley's watching the the uh, what you call it, the football game. National, the national oh, football game. Oh, okay. That's probably our cue right there. <laughs> yeah. Just got excited. <laughs> yeah, we need to get out of here. Okay, you know what? Let's wrap it up. So, Babyface, what did you want to talk about? Let's wrap it. Go check out my channel. I troll a bunch of people. That's what I like doing. <laughs> yeah. Done. I'm glad you are. You actually admitted this nonsense. <laughs> I'm glad you admitted what we've known and we've been trying to tell people that you do for a long time. Okay, <laughs> cool. Check out Babyface P, Baby Dash Face P. P. That's yep. that's how you remember it, baby. Dash face P. That's a dash that's face. a complete sentence. Yeah. Maybe dash right. face. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and um, Diximus Maximus right here. <laughs> you timed out, <laughs> James Hager. <laughs> he was uh, annoying. <laughs> <laughs> You're out of here. Um, I would like to uh, I would like to say well, first of all, I apologize to everybody for for being a little tardy today. Um, oh the- no, we enjoyed that immensely. We did. yeah, absolutely. We're please be late all the time. Oh. <laughs> My background wasn't even straight. You guys just didn't say anything to her about that. Either? 
No, no. <laughs> he was too excited to show his guns, man. I wasn't gonna yeah. gonna knock her down. All right, but yeah, that was that was kind of cool. Thank you guys for being. Uh, and I, she told me that the people in the chat, I don't even see they listen to me. She was like, and the people in the chat were nice to me, so I appreciate everybody in the chat being nice to her, so I don't have to look up your home address. Yeah, so your wife is awesome. Come on, your wife is awesome. We know why you went and jumped through twenty two thousand hoops to get married. <laughs> but she is awesome. It's nice. It's nice to be able to to be in the house with somebody that takes natural enthusiasm in what you're doing, and she means that too. Our guns. She's like, there's. But the, the odd thing is, she left this little black forty two, and I'm gonna get to my wrap up. She left this thing in here. This is only the third time I think I've touched this gun because I'm not allowed to shoot it. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. like you can. And I love this little gun. The black forty two is awesome. It she's is like, awesome, actually. You can't shoot it, but every gun I have, she 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 doesn't like ARs though, so we're working on that. Um, That's what I got. Uh, Cloud forty two. Yeah, they're nice. Yeah. Uh, but I definitely uh, would. Uh, I sold Walter, Walter yes. that gun. That's because of Hank. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we are trying to definitely uh, get this um, this uh, event funded, aiming for the truth on the road, trying to get all those funds and change people's lives. So, uh, first thing you guys can do, one of two things, is go to GoFundMe slash um aiming for the truth and if you guys see it in your heart to make any donation there that will be awesome i would greatly appreciate it and so will the thousands of people lives we're trying to change this year uh get them over not only helping them but getting them over to the pro side of guns and understanding what freedom is um also there's the patreon to help out with that movement and, and other things we're trying to do and remember if you join the patreon that's where i'm sharing all the discount codes and i'll actually be putting up another one tonight uh when we get off here and that's patreon slash uh, noc firearms and there's always a YouTube NOC uh, firearms channel, which I'm starting to put up a little bit of my training snippets, so you guys can go see kind of how I talk to people in training classes. Uh, I was watching one of those today. I need to go watch that the NOC firearms channel on YouTube. Yeah, NOC yeah. Firearms. Yeah, and I'll be, I'll be, and I know I need to get on that. So I guys, I do apologize, but I do train people, <laughs> so I will actually start putting up. Uh, um, I don't show the, the students going through their training a lot, uh, but I do put up videos of them making mistakes with their permission because I don't want to embarrass them. Um, and there's even one I don't think we put up yet, but it's called Ding. And if you haven't ever watched a video, I advise you go over to Instagram at NOC Firearms Training and watch like the second to last video I put up. And it says, take this time to watch this 60 seconds. It could save your life. If you do nothing else tonight, spend one minute going on Instagram watching that video. Um, uh, let's see. You also have the pa- Facebook page. It's Katie of NOC. Uh, I love the fact that Kevin Dixie has a ton of people on it, but I'm going to be shutting that one down. For people that know me, like you guys and uh, family and the followers and stuff like that, but I'm tired of the strange weirdo showing up. So I'm gonna be. Uh, <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> I was this is, that remark. This is the internet. You better get used to it. Well, it's, it's internet, and you know, it's, it's the uh, weirdo's gonna find you. Oh yeah. You can't escape from the weirdo. Find me. I just want them to find me over the platform where I can say what I want to say. You know, like <laughs> my mom and my like family follow the kept. I can't. You know, I have to. You can't yeah. express yourself. I can't, I can't express myself. Thank you, Walter. I appreciate that. Um, but if you guys wouldn't mind going over like the Katie of NOC on Facebook, that'd be great. Um, also on Facebook, NOC Firearms Channel. I'm sorry, training, NOC Firearms Training. That would be awesome. And on Twitter, it's um, Twitter slash NOC Firearms. And of course, the Instagram at NOC Firearms Training. As far as things coming up on the Patreon, I'm still looking for you guys to tell me uh, what you want to see, at least one or two things, what you want to see at SHOT Show, because that's only what. I don't know, Walter, you have fits when I tell you this. It's like 14 some days away or whatever. I don't know. Oh, I don't, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I, I, that's not my deadline. I got to ship my containers out this Thursday. Oh. So, yeah, yeah, so I got is. I got shizzes to do still. So I, I really should have stayed there all night and not be here, but that's all right. You know? Oh, well, thank you, Walter. Oh, we appreciate you. And I would like to give a big shout out. We think we have a date locked down, uh, so I'm not going to share the date yet, but the first uh, aiming for the truth is coming up in a few months. We will be in the city of Des Moines, Iowa. Des Moines, uh, Iowa. Uh, Des Moines, Iowa. And from there, after Shot Show, I'm pretty sure we'll have several more of these cities locked down. So, guys, seriously, um, we are looking to grow this. We're looking to enhance freedom and help human lives at the same time. So, if you find in your heart to get behind the mission that is going to change history, and I mean that, please join in with the Patreon and the GoFundMe. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. And, uh, you know, go check them out in the Iowas. Okay. So, Walter, I know you you're working on the shipping container that has getting to ready for to shot. Yep, 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 yep. Working on that still. Things are coming together. The plans coming together. After those containers leave, I'm a free bird till we leave to go to shot. So um, um, not not really, but that's yeah, I like exactly. I was about to say I don't know how free you're gonna be. Yeah, but, until okay. the telephone rings. Hey, can you talk to so and so? Hey, can you talk? No, no, no. Okay, yeah, I do talk to a lot of people. Um. Mm-hmm. 
But anyways, yeah, just that uh, Facebook, Instagram, try to get more of that stuff up there. Uh, I do have a Patreon account too, but if you want to give me some money, but you know, you don't have to. Um, yeah, well, Patreon, what is it? Oh, it's, uh, what is it? That's a good question. <laughs> it's uh, probably a CPR firearms at blah, 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 blah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna work on the Patreon thing. I haven't had time yeah, for you it. Gotta, seriously, Walter? it takes you know people. It takes time to, to do that stuff. You know, I gotta make uh -huh. guns, um, uh -huh. um, and stuff like that. But um, anyways, yeah. So keep an eye out for things. I won't be necessarily taking uh things to, to see stuff at Shot Show, but I will be seeing all the cool guns. So if you if you got something you really, what the heck? If you got something you really want to see, you can always uh, you can always uh um. You can ask, and we'll take a look. Hank will be there too, so we'll get. Yeah, some absolutely, stuff, yeah. and we'll make it up to you at Shot Show, Walter. We'll uh, be hanging out in your booth, Kevin and I. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, for some period of time, and um, inviting yeah, people to hang out. I gotta watch those fifty cal so that one I got on the still I got on display don't just don't fall yeah. into. If bag, Kevin, you know? if Kevin um, gives you a note that leads to another note that leads to another note, <laughs> no, I say run. run. For us, run. <laughs> <laughs> Go down the hallway. Around. Get out of there. <laughs> because you are doomed. By the third note, it's over. <laughs> I better get kissed after all that. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you. Or 50, you might. Kissed? It better be more than that. Hey, don't sell me out. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool. All right, so, you know, look forward to it. I don't know um, when we're seeing you again this week, Walter, because I know you have a whole bunch of stuff going on. Um, yeah, but, you know, after, we appreciate uh, maybe you. Maybe after... Um, you know, if, if I come on the scene, I got I got to have well anyway. The cameraman don't have to come out. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I will leave that off. Later. Mm -hmm. no. oh, we'll okay. get together the fourth shot. You know, never yeah, see. Absolutely, we will, yeah. and we'll be doing these shows. I'm not sure. I got to find out from Lola up till when we'll do the shows, and then we'll put the show on a hiatus again so we can get yeah, everything whole, ready whole, to go to show. Whole, the whole time thing with Las Vegas doesn't work very well for the show. So Yeah, I don't think we'll be able to do it, but we will have stuff coming to you guys. And there's a lot of stuff that we're going to be rolling out here over the weeks. I know one of the things I could tease you guys with is we've got this. Uh, An EMP attack. See that? Yeah, check it out. Survival Dispatch. Oh, there you go. Boring. So we're actually doing, we have a, a survival blog going on here. And, um, you know, I'm going to give you guys an invite to this. We'll talk about this later. I, if you guys are interested in it, I think lots of folks on here are interested in survival stuff. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We'll talk about that. That's one of the things that are going on here. Um, and it actually, it's, it's a paid site because there's some uh, exclusive information and all that in there. Catering specifically to survival and um but i i have i have a code that can get you guys a preview to that oh, okay. so we Thanks need to if you're interested let me know um or actually when i say let me know let lola know <laughs> so that we can we can roll that into everything i think i think there will be lots of people interested in that and we'll be talking about it um in the days and weeks and months and all that kind of stuff coming up here along with all the other crazy things that we're getting into so uh we appreciate everyone uh hanging out there with us um crispy says good night you know shout out to everyone who's still still hanging out here um daisha norales says hank will you live stream a bit of shot show yeah there'll probably be a couple of booths including safety harbor that when i'm at the safety harbor firearms booth i'll live stream probably a couple of other places yeah we'll we'll do some live streams from there that'll probably be on facebook and different places like that uh, instagram etc so that we can get that out there. So I want to thank everyone for watching, for all the comments and all that kind of stuff. We appreciate it. That's great. Oh. Everyone that supports us, all the people that sponsor the channel, like Safety Harbor Firearms, Andrew's Custom Leather, and of course, these dudes here, Big Daddy Guns. Great. Let me see. Man, it's a little weird. Big Daddy. My hands look smaller now. <laughs> but Big Daddy Guns. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thanks to Big Daddy Guns for um, doing all everything that they do for us. And the folks who support us on Patreon, we're Patreon slash Hank Strange. So thanks a lot, guys. Good night. See you tomorrow. We're out of here. Peace. Peace. Peace.